Welcome everybody to this, the WPT 500 knockout final table. I'm of course James Dempsey, joined by my main man, Jeff Gross. How are we doing, Jeff? Good man, ready for uh, fast paced, big action. This is a knockout, large event, WPT 500. So about as fun as it gets, these knockout tournaments becoming so prevalent online. Great to see World Poker Tour, Party Poker, putting on a fun event, big prize pool, way over the guarantee. So it's really nice. It's gonna be fun, fun final table day. Yeah, this one smashed it, Jeff. I was I was kind of looking at the, the tournament before we came on. Obviously, we had the WPT 500 last week, the, uh, the vanilla, as they like to say, just the, the regular prize pool. But th this one, far exceeding it in numbers of players. Uh, $1.3 million prize pool for this $500 tournament. I think if we take a look at the tournament info, we'll, we'll, we'll see all this. But um, yeah, it's just monstrous for a $500 tournament. To see here, of course, with that, the first prize 76,000. But Jeff, knockout tournaments, you got to throw the heads up bounty that goes on there, right? So, typically, first prize is going to be a lot bigger than that 76k, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really it is exciting, and there's a lot of interesting spots. I think in in knockout tournaments, it makes it so fun at the final table because ICM, such something you hear about so often, but some things that may not seem right are right, and it it's sort of just one of those things where you see extra action. Guys are hunting. You don't know how guys are going to approach it. Will some guys be you know going for it? Are some guys sitting back trying to ladder, or are they just going to go hunting and try to? Try to pick up a big big bounty so it's uh it's one of those newer formats it's a lot of fun i think the most fun to play online i heard you mention last time james you've been playing some more knockouts uh over the, over the, the <laughs> pandemic during COVID, and it, it is fun man it's just like one of those things where you're kind of always learning and and, and and if you will guessing a little more than the normal because there's just so many unique situations where you know something that might not normally be perceived as the right play is the right play uh with the math and the bounty at on on the on on, uh, on the line so really exciting to watch yeah oh is it a little difference and look at that jeff you see the chip counts in here armin Razai coming in as the chip leader what he uh david and benjamin all over 200 mil but jeff uh, some short stacks down the bottom and as we're just saying it's a knockout tournament right so the, the short stacks it, it's a little bit more precarious than a regular tournament right you, you're gonna get called uh, a, a little bit more lightly as we just head on into the action it was We'll see how this goes. I mean, 1.75, 3.5 million blinds. Uh, obviously, pretty deep here. But like I say, uh, well, we see Sveden here in the big blind with the ace is one of the shorter stacks. Boyka, of course. Uh, probably, Jeff, I'm going to say the the best known player on this this final table, I'd say, Alexi Boyka. Um, I don't know if you have many yeah, experience that, that... with any of the other guys here. Obviously, Armin Razai, uh, relatively well known, had some big caches, but Boyka. Oh, actually, out. no, I'm sorry. Benjamin. Benjamin Chalot is known. I know that name for sure. Um, I, I believe. Uh, are you familiar with him? I feel like we've seen him at a another uh, big table here, but he he definitely well, look, is a. Oh, Jeff! Straight away we joined the action. There were eight on the final table, and David, you just say one well, moment, rips it from the small nine six, sped in in the big blind, calls it off with the aces, and gets run down straight away. I mean, that that. That's quite a start to the stream. That's that. That's not how you draw it up. You come to the final table, you get aces. You're just hoping for the action. You see a shove, and then you're out. So, uh, yeah, be careful what you wish for. Really sick, sick uh, beat wow. there, and, and a really fortuitous, uh, rewarding the aggressor, David L, with a big pickup there and a knockout early. Jeez, right, right. And, and yeah, and it's kind of a little bit of what we we're saying, I guess that. You're going to jam a little bit wider in those spots against a shorter stack than maybe you normally would just because, hey, if they do call, I've got a chance of winning thousands. Yeah, well, that was uh, that was that was quite the hand. So we do see a fast and furious start. And now we pick up the action. We got nines and we see the button raise versus Armin, who is in with a dead small blind. He's got two nines and, and these guys have a fairly deep stack versus the field. So it'll be interesting to see what Armin does. He does decide to raise and not call and gets a bit of a tricky flop. Yeah, uh, I must say, uh, David, well, David's raised button. Armin's just flat from the big man, hasn't he? Obviously the two biggest stacks, they're gonna, Armin's yep. just gonna play this pretty cautiously. I think with any hand here from the big, these two, not too much reason to get involved with each other. 
Wow, Jeff, what a start. That first hand, 9-6 versus Ace is barely time to catch our breath. But welcome, everyone, who's joining us, as always, here for the stream for this WPT 500. If you're coming in just now, you missed a good one to start. We have lots of giveaways going off this evening, guys, as per usual. And we do have a beautiful little free roll taking place over on Party Poker. Starts in an hour and 10 minutes. And uh, guys, that one's password protected. I see you all in the chat screaming for the password. Well, I can tell you it is we love Jeff because Jeff, we love you. It's simple as that. It just makes sense. Man, this so is uh, this get... is quite I, I really that is nice. That is very flattering. So I appreciate that, and I hope you guys have wish you the best in that that free roll. That is quite a quite a nice opportunity. So good luck. Are you playing, James, or no? You got you can't multitask on I'm... that. Are you got the off table? Man, I'm in there. Don't you, think, don't you worry about that. I mess, I'm in there. I've been messing around. And guys, let me tell you, tonight, obviously, we've been doing these the last few weeks. First prize is a seat to the Irish Open online opener event. That's 530 euros. And then I believe there's another 500 euros in cash paid out to the remaining places. So it's certainly worth getting in the mix, giving out some of those seats. And Irish Open, Irish Open of course, online coming up very soon, guys. It's, it's going to be a fun one. Of course, the main event, 1K. Plenty of satellites to get involved final every Sunday for that please do check it out but we're giving a seat away to the Irish Open day 1a opener bit of a mouthful but worth winning guys worth winning. now uh, Jeff Armin Rizai here on the button uh, 8 9 suited yeah it does just rip it in I, th I thought he might Jeff and Jareen's got your hand the ace queen in the small oh man this this feels like wow well just right into it here we go what a flop oh, oh my oh, straight, flush. straight flush come on ace queen how can you just always let us down and man that would be a hand that we want to plug in not because we have so much attention wow. to ace queen but because that is a really tricky spot with the icm on the line I, i'm actually not sure what do you think there james I mean, you can't fault him right especially if you're going playing to win the tournament you got to believe you have the best hand probably dominating but what do you think there with the icm there's only really well, one other stack I, in your position but man jeff man, what a spot I, I i will come back to it because i think we're about to see another rule in here because davis got two nines alexi boyka is now by far the shortest stack with ace king wow. and we're gonna see a, a, a race run out here i think for boyka already down to six players um kind of catching our breath sixteen and a half thousand guaranteed obviously bounties flying around we'll get the bounty numbers for you in a second when i can i'm, I'm we're, we're forced into playing catch up at the start of this final table. It's going uh, lightning fast, but Boyka, of course, with a, a jam here. And this one, a much more straightforward situation. David Lopez will, of course, be making the call. Um, yeah, what do you think nice. on that, that ace queen? It's close, but this one is definitely not close. We got to see a race here for a chance to get back in it. Ace king needs help. Hard to believe he's not coming to the best hand. Chip leader raising in the cutoff, but he is going to see the bad news. He's behind. What a flop for nine. He's going to wow. hold. So that is another knockout, man. Wow. Just like that. Wow. Down to, wow. It's just down to wow. We're going fast. Five left, just like that for a WPT 500 title. And it's going to be a lot up top. As we mentioned, the knockouts are on top of the prize pool. So you can see generally you'll, you expect a little over double. I mean, it should be around 160 grand to first US dollars. So really big uh, ROI on this 500. Again, getting 1.3 million from a million guarantee. So really impressive field and a uh, big start for the big stacks. They're separating themselves. David L and Armin, <laughs> yeah. both uh, very healthy leads here. Yeah, I mean, we've got, I think, 1.3 billion chips in play, Jeff. So we see those two with uh, yeah, over 800K between them. And, and suddenly, I mean, the blinds just crept up 2 million, 4 million, Jeff. But suddenly we're dealing with a very deep final table here. Uh, Duff Charette out of nowhere is the shortest stack with over 30 blinds. But yeah, I mean, the ace queen hand, Jeff, um, interesting spot because I mean, Ar Armin rips the button. We're in the small blind and we're one of the two shortest stacks, but the, the big blind is one of those shortest. But, you know, we kind of know funnel tables with uh, six left, seven left. The jumps aren't too big there. The jump from seventh to sixth was under 5k. Uh, I think ace queen's probably just too strong jeff I, I i think we've got to call it off but uh i mean it's never easy right but we just i think yeah. we just dominate enough and, and armin's gonna have hands like that eight nine suited but okay we, we're probably not loving it to get in against that hand but uh, we've got right. enough equity i think and, and also I mean, with course, style jeff, though eight nine right? suited it's, just yeah 
Yeah, yeah just rips it off, rips off the straight flush on the turn. straight flush, quite a start. So we've seen aces, aces getting cracked, and then we see a straight flush. So you guys got a full action today. We got a lot of a lot of collisions, and uh, this has been going quickly. But as you said, becoming a little deeper now as the stacks are consolidating. So we should get to see a lot of play, some deep stack situations, and a little everything. Yeah, and it, it's important, Jeff, like the, um, to cool off with the ace-queen, because now we double up, now we cover some players. When we're playing a bounty tournament, you want to cover players when you're playing a bounty tournament. You you want to be able to knock people out and pick up those bounties. Speaking of the bounties, Jeff, I'm just looking now with with five left. I believe uh, David Lopez's bounty is worth about 13 grand. Armin, five. Ben, three and a half. And uh, Gus and Duff are both around 2,800, um, their bounties. But we'll try and keep tabs on that. Unfortunately, guys, we can't show on the replay. You know that by now. Uh, but we can, well, I'll, I'll sort of try and keep track of it as we go along. Um, but man, how fast can this go? Down to five instantaneously. Yeah, really quick and a big hand here for Duff getting kings. Doesn't look like much action. Although again, with his stack size and the big blind, so many chips and the, the bounties on the line, you know, you, you could see some wide defense. Three, five off is a little, little out of line, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Um, really, really interesting dynamic with the stacks as we got the two big stacks and then sort of all the remaining three players are right in striking distance to each other. So be interesting to see what David L, what, it, what he goes for here, if he's going to you know, elect to put pressure on the stack. Um, you know, it's uh, really normally things is definitely a fold, but I could see any option here. I mean, three five off is, is a little far out there, right? If he three bets it, I mean, it, it would definitely be the situation you could go for with those stack sizes there. But uh, David L hasn't folded yet. Oh, there he does get no, up. But, but yeah, I, I'm with showing you. Showing he's it's thinking about it. You can tell he's ready to play, man. David's ready to put the pedal to the metal there. If he's not, if he's not snap folding the three five off, the wheels are spinning, Ooh. and I think he's going to be putting some pressure on. <laughs> Jeff, we've got Ace King and we've got Jacks, the two short stacks, <laughs> level thirty blinds deep. We're playing five handed. Uh, I mean, Gustavo's going to three bet and Duff's going to shove. Gustavo's going to cool. We're going to be all in surely again. This is wow. this is really, this these is are quite the, quite the setups here so far, right? Absolute madness. Ben's got a nice playable hand, 7 8 suited, but he's going to be sitting this one out. It's going to go raise, and, and we'll see a raise here. Just, so. oh, he just flats. Just kidding. Jeff. Just kidding. I, I was going to oh. say, like, Duff just covers Gustavo by literally 500 chips, which is obviously very wow. important in these spots if they. Where to get it in, but just flats and wow, he's gonna potentially get away from a bust out here, Jeff, because it's gonna make eight deuce. Um, he's gonna have to lose some chips post flop, but I doubt he's gonna lose all of them. Yeah, really interesting, and it just shows you where you think. You know, certain times in a tournament, you may be playing one way or think there's only one one path out, and you know, in this particular spot, you could argue that he should be just looking to three back get it in. But he does go for the more passive line. In this particular scenario, he's gonna gonna get to uh, ha have a sort of a free roll, if you will, in terms of even maybe the chance to win the pot or just lose less chips. And on this run out, both players not gonna be super thrilled with the boards. Ace King's got to feel pretty good, but the the heart does complete a possible flush. So let's see what happens. Yeah, a heart rolling off neither with one and tough. It's forced to check and. I... Jeff, I guess the jacks are still just good enough to check back. Maybe a really small bet. It kind of protect stroke, get value stroke by a showdown against some of those single heart hands. Like a king, queen with a heart that decides not to double barrel than most of those would. Does check back. Eight pairs turn. Doesn't really change too much. I mean, Gustavo shouldn't really have an eight. Neither will Duff. I guess Duff's going to go for some value here. And Jeff just question whether Gustavo can... We'll lay it down and I'd, I'd imagine i'd like yeah, to i think he could. can find a fold here but it's uh especially on that sizing goes a little bit bigger and gustavo's not going to love it but in, in hindsight is uh he's no matter what he's going to be losing less chips and maybe even saving a big river call see what he does here though with no heart in his hand no ace kind of a tricky tricky one and he would not be correct if he calls let's see what he goes with he is in the tank I don't think yeah, he's going to I call, wonder, but, Jeff, why yeah. he didn't go for the three-bet preflop. Do you think he was trying to lay a trap maybe for, for David or Armin in the blinds who might try and squeeze out the two shorter stacks? Or do we think it's just a case of didn't want to get Jackson five-handed? We've got some ladders coming up. I mean... 
yeah, it's a, it's always that's why poker's so so fun. I mean, these are the spots where you just you kind of get to you know as the players also are watching, they get to see the the cards on delay. They kind of get a feel for who's going for it, who's not, what's happening, what style are they playing, and that and it's also you don't really know. Yeah, it could be exactly that. Could think that David's just going to freak out and go nuts. Could also be for that exact reason. Doesn't want to get in a flip versus ace queen versus ace king. Of course, you lose out value when your opponent has tens or nines, but uh, you also could get some folds from like a hand like king queen maybe. But, um, you know, I also could just be really comfortable with this game, wanting to play post-flop, wanting to see, uh, you know, maybe that's what his whole style's been. It's hard to get to a final table with 1,300 players and whatever right. our friend Gustavo has been doing, he's been playing very well, obviously, to make it this deep. So another uh, spot where maybe most of us would be busted and he is still in and has plenty of chips. Yeah, certainly does. I mean, Kings from the small, just going to pop it up three and a half X into Duff, who... 40 bigs, Jeff, suited Jack, says, all right, I've um, got just enough to have a look at a flop here. Clicks in and the queen, queen, four, rainbow, not the board that he was looking for. And Yeah, I mean, you could argue, again, with the, the, the tightness of stacks with the next three, uh, besides the two big leaders, that he could just give this up. But I think the suited Jack a little too good, and also Armin's going to be up to no good. He's going to be raising uh, a, a wide variety of his range, so I think that Duff just saying, you know what, I am going to... You know, I'm gonna have worse hands in the spot. Let me let me peel while I still have some chips, uh, and, and I get too short, and I have to be super ICM aware. So I think um, you know, don't blame the peel there, and uh, Armin's just gonna pick up another one. So it's uh, it's really really tight here between the the final three, and this is a tough spot for Ben Benjamin Shalawi. He's got right. five handed king queen. Got to believe he's gonna be opening. He's got to expect pressure from David or Armin. That's kind of the problem when you open and get resistance. You start thinking, oh, are they just messing with me? Because it's so obvious. But in this particular scenario, David's got a real hand. Yeah, you, you kind of convince yourself, don't you, Jeff? You're like, oh, I think he's just messing with me because he's the chip leader. Okay, in this case, he's just going to flat. That sounds, seems reasonable, I guess, Jeff. Uh, for that reason, exactly, right? Ben's not going to be opening light under the gun with David and Armin behind. So David shows a little respect. He's just going to throw in the call and yeah, he's got tens in position. Why not? See you guys, a lot of you in the chat looking for that password. Welcome. Uh, shame you didn't catch us at the start because we had bust outs galore at, on the first orbit of this final table. But the password is at the top of the screen there. You can see it. We love Jeff. We most certainly do. Get involved. We're giving out an Irish open opener seat for the winner of the free roll. And we have another 500 euros in prize money to pay out to the remaining places. It's so certainly worth getting in the mix. Costs nothing. Head on over to Party Poker. And of course, guys, we'll be giving away our usual uh, tickets at the top of every hour. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning one of those, all you have to do is follow us right here on Twitch. And we will give out 10 tickets each hour worth $11 a pop. As Ben, as far as that little seat bet here, Jeff, 8-9 uh, deuce, couple of clubs, has two overs, has a club. Just figures he can just knock out some... some like some ace highs perhaps that David might have that haven't connected and some other hands that might end up bluffing him but picks up some equity Jeff with the gut shot albeit David now has top set yeah everyone's got something here and Ben you know tricky deciding does he want to keep does he want to keep his stack preservation or does he want to put pressure here and shell it off on some and uh, I mean this is a this is a tough spot everyone's gonna like their hand he does decide to slow down and David just hits the absolute money card, but he was already in great shape. He's gonna find himself with a set, only having to fade a gut shot. He doesn't know that. Let's see what he does on sizing. He's certainly gonna be betting here, and I think he has a few options. Pretty wet board though, right? When you have the top set, your opponent could easily have the flush strike, could easily have jack X, uh, and he is gonna go on the larger sizing. Yeah, really big 45, three quarters sets up what? Uh, sets up like 75% on the river. I guess uh, sizing that Ben's not to continue against. Like you say, Jeff, I mean, he's just hoping he's up against potentially an overpair, uh, some Jack X, certainly wants to continue, some of those flush draws even. Man, David just running away with it at the moment, Jeff. He's having himself a day, running hot, getting there, getting hands, getting the right situations, and he gets another uh, solid hand, and Gustavo, in the small blind with a very sensitive stack. I mean, he's got, uh, you know, a playable hand, chip leader opening up, but it is nine high and he does just get out of the way. He knows there's too many, the, the, the negative scenarios outweigh the positive and he gives it up and David just gonna add to his stack, separate himself 
as the chip leader at the moment. Yeah, like like you say, Jeff, you can see Gustavo just probably wanted to play that hand, but this, this David Lopez has been going pretty crazy. We saw him rip the 9-6. You see him, you know, we just saw him win that pot there with top set, but the guys don't know he had top set. It just looks like he's he's going hard on everyone. And he's thinking, you know, maybe I just want to sit this one out. Let these guys battle away. Gustavo now with two queens on the back. Now, this is a hand he might gamble with, <laughs> Jeff, given the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, David definitely, you know, he's uh he's in position here in terms of with the chips. He's out of position in the hand, but he's definitely looking at king nine and decides uh, it's a good good enough hand to defend. Could even put a three bet in, but decides to flat. And Gustavo has to love that with the queen of diamonds and no over card of the board. A pretty, pretty safe spot for Gustavo. And David does have a diamond in some back doors, so could get a little bit interesting. Definitely, definitely could, could uh, do a variety of things here. So I'm sure with that size, he's going to at least peel. Yeah, as you say, all sorts of permutations down these streets. That less than third I thought I could flick in a check raise, although in this particular spot, Gustavo would just, you know, fist pump be able to be able to get this in. I mean, there is some merit you know, to, to flatting getting tricky, but at the same time, like, I don't think you really want to mess around too much. The board's super wet and you got a great, great flop for your hand. So probably just yeah, going to well, get it's... it going but we did see gustavo flat jacks does go for the call so gustavo yeah, I... playing tricky and oh, it's going to backfire wow I, I i like the call i mean with the shortest we do want to play we've seen david go kind of crazy so far i get it he's just been desperately unlucky here jeff and it's going to be tough I mean, this this it's an overcard an overcard is never good obviously when you've got an overpair but this is like a pretty good card right how, how does our opponent have a king here we're thinking they've got some straight draw combos, some flush draw combos. We're not expecting to see too much King X. Um, this is this is going to be tough for Gustavo on the river because it's certainly not folding yet. Like you say though, did did get away from those jacks, Jeff? Pretty cheap. This one uh, going to be a lot harder. Okay, that's obviously a, a good card in the sense that he now loses to a lot of hands, and it may even see. I mean, David, I guess, still has to kind of go small here, Jeff. But does he even? I mean. You're worried about some of those draws yourself. Super interesting hand. Quite a run out. I mean, Queens blocks some stuff and it has a pure diamond. But now I think he's just going to be happy to just check after his trap went from a trap to, you know, just hoping to get out of dodge. But he's uh, going to be ha going to be very unhappy, but also kind of happy not to go not to go broke. But man, what a what a run out this was. And uh, man, he's uh, right, was, wow. wow. I was about to say, is he going to try and bluff this? This is a, such a great hand to bluff with, Jeff. But would you do you think you need to bluff when you've got two queens here? I mean, you beat so much, but he obviously thinks yeah, I can maybe make him fold two pair. I, I think this he's is gonna actually fold, incredible. Jeff. This like, is incredible all around because you can tell Gustavo is obviously playing the game. He's flatting, he's trapping, he's getting saucy. And I don't think that's wow, that's full value. Oh. I, 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 it's just kind of a crazy hand. I would love to get. Uh, I love pads. Where's pads? Can we call him? Is anyone watching? <laughs> I would I'd love to see what pads would do on that spot because that is uh, that was a high level hand. That was exciting. Well, I, I liked it, but at the same time, like David, David had a, a nine blocking eight nine. He had the king of diamonds blocking quite a few of the flushes. So he did have a contender to call off with, but at the same time, and like, what do you think Gustavo's got? He's he's raised pre, bet called flop, called turn, and now wants to shove river. Do we? Do you really think he's turning like a ten into a bluff? I mean, I didn't think he'd turn queens into a bluff. So I can completely understand David folding, despite the fact he had a theoretically good hand to call with. This is great stuff already, Jeff. We've seen. This is David. exciting. I'm, 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 I'm I knew this would be good. I knew this was gonna be a fun one, but this is uh, this is definitely definitely cool. We've seen some great hands. We've seen some bad beats. We've seen a straight flush, and we're seeing uh, some players play at a high level. So this is this is definitely exciting. Yeah, Gus, that just bossing it straight away. Like, not many players, Jeff, are gonna are gonna turn the queens into a bluff there. Uh, this, it's, uh... Is it, do you think he was credit. bluffing though? Because like he's not getting eight nine to fold, he's not getting a flush to fold. He, he, the opponent doesn't. Really uh, think, I think he's, he's thinking your opponent has a king. I think he's just trying to get maybe a hand like jack ten. Oh, I mean ten seven or uh, some weird two pair combo. Um, I think I think ten seven is the most likely something like that to fold. But maybe even the hand like the one David had the the, the rag king of diamonds. I don't I don't know, man. It was. 
That was a weird one. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's obviously just taken, hey, look, I've got queens blocking the straight. I've got the queen of diamonds. I can have flushes. I can maybe make David Hero fold something here. Maybe that's it the, maybe it's a merge. I love that word. Maybe it was a merge. Maybe he just thought, you know what? I might have the best hand. I might be value valuing, but it's a good spot to uh, to, to put him to the test. So uh, we see David here stick on huge pot, hundred million chip pot, and uh, gonna have chip leader implications here. Ace four suited misses, die, clubs miss, a lot of stuff misses. Could have the best hand right. as well uh, already, but Armin probably realizing he likely doesn't have the best hand other than a flush draw and. Uh, now, too much on the line though and decides to check back he does have showdown value with ace high there's some so he does check it back but uh david elgin extend his lead yeah so he does i'm giving it up and very much the divide remains the same gus ben and duff all with what, between 30 and 40 blinds i'm in a little shorter than dave but does have that all important position on our chip leader who is well, let's see, Jeff, how comfortable he's feeling. He's got the queen four of suit on the button. Is this getting raised up? So I'm ripping the nine six from the small run down the aces. Now he's going to give this one up. I'm in the same with this eight five off. Man, these guys are these guys are going hard. I'm at... This is the this is this is a big one though. I mean, big 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 jumps coming up. And as we mentioned, you see that prize pool seventy six thousand for first and second the same. But this is the knockout. So when they do go heads up, you play for double what your bounty shows and double what theirs is. So it ends up being generally about double what you're seeing first place. So this is a six figure score first place, no doubt about it. Five hundred buying quite a quite an opportunity. Quite quite a, a big swing here. And um, I would imagine some of these names we're not quite as familiar with been some high level play, but this is going to be uh, six. It's hard to get six figure scores. They don't come very often, especially when you're in for a $500 buy-in. So, you know, really exciting day, really big opportunity for the players here and let's we'll see who's going to get it done. Yeah. I was just looking as well, Jeff. I saw Gus has actually had some pretty decent results in some of these WPT lines we've done in the last year. He won a uh, 1K six max WPT online. Um, back in the summer and I had a deep run in the 10k WPT championship uh, I say deep run, it came 70th but out of a thousand players in the 10k with first prizes 1.7 million, I'm calling that deep man, that's a sweat uh, here he is kind of proving some stuff with those two queens there's Armin it's going over pot Jeff with the 8 blocker, that's it right, I can have a straight I'm going to put pressure on you. Have some of this. Man, these That's guys amazing. are in a hurry. I love it. So Je Jeff, you, you like these Banny events, right? You you have a lot of fun. You said, obviously, uh, I've, I've just sort of started playing them more recently. But, man, it's, it's a fun. Whoa. Duff finds the call on the turn and is not going to get rewarded. Armin Bink in the gut shot on the end. Yikes. Yeah, that's quite, I mean, listen, Jungle Man said the best, better gutters, and Armin does that, capitalizes. Now, Diamond does come in, it's a pretty interesting card, but he does make his hand. Uh, if you're bluffing with eight high, no, you know, gut shot and you hit it, you got to think you're going to go for a bet. Now, I thought maybe he would shove, but I guess the shove doesn't make a ton of sense and maybe even decides he could bet and find out where he's at. So actually, I like that. That makes a lot of sense, that sizing there, to, to probably just get called, uh, and if you get shoved on, you could maybe realize you don't have the best hand. Pretty unlikely Duff's going to go for a bluff there. Yeah, it's only if the, I mean, I think with an eight, you may have to still call, but you're certainly going to want to bet some hands smaller, aren't you, Jeff? A little block bet now and again. Um, actually, you're wrapping a lot of strength by overbetting turn anyway. Then going to pop the ace 10 under the gun. Blind's gone up two and a half, five. Uh, Blinds, guys, the start of today, 16 minutes, but I think well, now we reach this level, or perhaps the next they go to 24 minutes. Um, I think it's at this level they go to 24 minute levels. Um, but hey, I mean, who needs levels, Jeff? We can just we can keep the blinds at this level the way these guys are playing. They'll they'll battle it out. Nah, they don't, we don't we don't need to put them under any pressure. They they're fighting hard. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is definitely one of those things where. Uh, if if the players there's no one there's no one uh, stalling here these guys are going for it they're they're firing and, and going for the title no question about it we've seen some some great plays and some aggressive maneuvers and uh, you know man poker's fun right now I'll just say it's fun I was having a, a chat today with Dominic Nietzsche about the game and where it's at and you know, it just shows you there's just so much 
there's so much work, so many different things going on. And, and there's the po poker is popular right now. There's a lot of different styles. You know, there's the limp style, there's limp raising, uh, there are limp or three X, which Dominic Nietzsche implements. Then there's like the, the over bets. And you've seen like Adamo who went not party hundred K and been playing such a high level. And it's just fun, right? Cause like you and I play differently. You at home probably play differently. These guys are playing differently and, and there's not an automatic answer. It's like, even you and I can guess. And a lot of times we're going to see people go right. with an alternate route or there's not a, there's not one way to, to play. And it's, uh, it's just, it's great. It's a poker seems to be at an all time high right now with the guarantees, uh, the live as well. Can't wait for party poker to get back. Hopefully the Bahamas. I think that in my mind, I don't have any inside info, uh, but I would think that like November, hopefully uh, for the, the Caribbean would be back, but I don't know, James, what are you thinking? And, and if you have any inside I, info, don't say anything, but what, what's your guess? <laughs> I, I'm hopeful, man. I'm hopeful that we're back at the uh, at the Bahama for the CPP. Like we just just to see, man. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a weird year for life poker. Obviously, the weird year for the rest of the world. Things are gonna start getting back in back in place. Certain events are gonna be able to happen, but obviously, Jeff, we're gonna have a lot of different operators and and tours competing for a very condensed time frame this year. Everyone wants to get events going, right? It's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but hopefully, yeah. I, I think I'm with you, Jeff. The CPP, I mean, it's one of the best events of the year in the in the world of poker. I mean, everyone who's been there raves about it. I, I, obviously, the, probably the, the probably the best event that Party Poker Live are gonna do is is the CPP at Bahama. So I, I'm hopeful that one's going ahead, my man. I, I'm looking forward to getting back there. But above anything else, Jeff, that's yeah. the you know we can. We can leave the other events. Just get me, get me back to the Bahamas in November. That's where I want to be at. We'll it's see. it's kind of amazing how it all how it all shook out because the Bahamas at the Atlantis for so many years, and that was sort of like a, a automatic stop. People start their year, and that was the thing. And then all of a sudden, like you know, stars kind of just that that thing came to an end, and and all of a sudden, you know, party had already picked up there. So there's really no no even dead time in the Bahamas. It was sort of like a, a new a right. new better if you will, venue up to date, closer to the airport, so many positive and party doing so many great things. So yeah, right away into a uh, Bahamas uh, stop. If you, if you haven't been down there, I highly recommend it. Super, super nice venue and uh, yeah, great event. Hopefully in November, as we said, we'll see when that's, you know, can be confirmed or not, but it's a, still a lot going on in the world. Hard to say what's going on then. And uh, here's a pretty classic matchup. We got button, big blind, king, queen off, ace, jack off. Everyone's got a little something, but uh, there's a Ooh. shove and man, this is one of those spots where it's a, such Punk. a brilliant shove, and this you can see it puts yeah. the hand so strong as Ace Jack into the into the into the hurt box here. Yeah, I don't I don't think he can call Jeff with covering Duff sub twenty, covering Gus. I mean, obviously you could call in theory if you give Armin enough hands, but how many how many hands are you going to give him? And there we go, he does make the fold. And, um, completely reasonable to do so wow armin is just happy like david he's just gonna they're gonna take names man they're going hard and now ben next hand dealt with two jacks but yeah jeff i, I would hope with these some of these live events you guys know watching is what's what's key to the party poker method and the the ethos of the big events is is a huge amount of satellites so i mean you know jeff these kind of decisions they have to be taken pretty soon and we, we want to have CPP in November, you need a long time to run enough satellites to get everyone in. So, I mean, hopefully we'll we'll get some ideas in the next uh, couple of months, really, what, what the schedule might look like for the rest of the year. But um, not much, not much. Me and Jeff can say at the moment on that. But in the meantime, yes. Jeff, we've got the online stuff, right? We've got, like I say, Party Poker uh, Irish Open online coming up. That's our next big event right here. And we'll have loads more through the year no doubt so ben does pop up these two jacks david calling in position with five six of clubs jeff and look at this flops middle pair gut shot back door flush draw go. yeah, it's, uh, it sort of seems like david's day i gotta say i mean if i had to ask me to pick someone it just he's he's hitting boards he's he's getting there he's playing well he's playing post flop and here he is in position with the absolute smash of a flop and if you're ben you gotta like it you don't probably have too many uh, spots where you think you're in too bad a shape here. I mean, I guess, you know, there is some six, seven suited. If he's flatting five, six suited, of course, there's some sets, but overall, Jack's got to feel pretty good. And we do see a check, check here. So Ben, Ben likely going to start putting some chips in. Now there's possible flush draws and, you know, you, you got to feel good about your hand when your opponent checks. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Ben's obviously decided to check this flop because Dave is going to try and bluff it a reasonable amount. Ben's not supposed to hit 763 too much when he's opening into those two players behind him. David, though, with his pair, gut shot and backdoor flush, we're happy to check it back. And now faces the overbet when he picks up an additional gut shot. Of course, Jeff, eight or four now gets him there. And, uh, certainly good enough, even just with the six at this point, to be calling this bet after the check on the flop from Ben. And, expect just a call here it's, it's an interesting it's super interesting spot so he does go for the call we see a 10 and an interesting block wow. bet being, being yeah. executed here i'm mm, this is an interesting one jeff because a lot of the hands that david calls with on the turn have uh, potentially made two pair or, or made the straight this is seems like quite a weird spot to bet for the particular hand, it's super interesting uh, too, but we do see David make the right decision and the high, high level. I'm, I'm really enjoying these lines so far. There's been some some uh, very, very interesting spots and, and it seems like some high level thinking going on, on on these players. So also probably a lot of experience. You know, they played, this is a multi-day event. They two, three tables left. These players have been playing with each other. There's now whole cards up, they're watching a bit. So there's some information and and players may be doing some exploits at this point, but uh, we're, we're definitely enjoying it. And we've, we've seen a bunch of uh, action so far. And we got uh, Queen 8 suited here for Duff, David opening, and he is our shortest stack. His risk premium is the lowest, but besides not quite good enough to jam and doesn't really want to get into flatting Queen 8 out of position versus the chip later, so he, he gives it up. Yeah, seems pretty reasonable. I like it. I like, I like Jeff, I like your words, the risk premium. I like it. Got that from I do a little Should training courses still. I try to stay up on it. You know, that was uh, <laughs> try to keep up with the terminology. You know, no, I, I like it. I like it. It's not, it's not like Pad's hand of the day. You know, he drops stuff. Also, if you keep it, if you uh, if you watch some stuff, you know, you pick up some fun terms. But risk premium sounds uh, sounds serious. But really, all that means is his risk of going out is the lowest. When your risk premium's low, if he goes out right now, it's not the end of the world, right? He's got no one even in double. If he doubles, he's basically where Gustavo is. So if he were to get out right, right now. It's not the end of the world. Now, if, if Benjamin calls off with Ace Jack, his risk premium was not the lowest, and that would be a semi-disaster to go out in fifth when he was in third and calling off. So, you know, that's a good recognition from Armin. He had a nice hand to do it with. You know, it's not like he had he, he was getting two out of line. He did have King Queen off, pretty powerful and in, in standard spot. But uh, yeah, I think everyone's pretty aware of what's going on and what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, Sony looks at tough deciding to effectively rip this one. Actually, Dazali went like. 50 leaving 30 back in case there's two jams behind but i think probably better going the other way like 30 leaving 50 but um that's the right idea guys uh, looking for the password i see some of you it's top of the screen there we love jeff head on over to party poker you need to click the restricted tab you find the tournament uh, use that password to enter of course you'll need a real money party poker account and we're giving away an irish open online opener seat worth 530 euros and another 500 euros in cash given out to the remaining places in that one so please do join us it starts in just under 40 minutes and there's an hour of late regiment and of course we do allow rebuys in these free rolls so be careful you know these free rolls jeff they can they can bite you you know with one year of rebuys but you got to be in the mix first goes definitely free after that you got to start start spinning up get some Get some min caches for a fraction of your buying, Jeff. That's what happened to me the other week in that one. I couldn't help it. Yeah, I need the rebuys. No, for sure. Yeah, got to gotta rebuy, have some fun. Free rolls are good. You got Benjamin Shalow with the butt and Jack 8 off the sides to give it up. Not a, not a very attractive spot to come in light versus the two two big stacks. But uh, he does have the puck. Jack 8 decides to fold. And then here we go. David versus Armin. And David has been... I haven't really seen him shy away from any pots. 10-4 off, not a fun one, but does go for the call yeah and i guess jeff he's it's hard isn't it for armin to really ever get two out of line against him so i guess he assumes he's gonna see the flop slightly more often than he should so maybe 10 4 just just edges into a call but let's see if armin uh, wants to do anything with a 7 5 he doesn't happy to check that one back 9 9 deuce couple of diamonds david actually way the best at this one with 10 of diamonds and 10 high does elect to just bet one blind and will surely take this one down. But it, there may be some interesting spots between those two guys. 
for sure. I'm in position with a slightly shorter stack, but so, so deep. Let's say blind's getting a little longer now, to 24 minute levels. Man, this would be a fun one to get in. Jeff, I mean, uh, I have to confess, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sharp on these on these bounty situations. I guess that you know, as you get towards the end, you're. I mean, obviously, winning the tournament is so important, right? For those bounties, like to actually taking first place has got to be worth so much that I guess there comes a point where we don't really worry too much about the tr sort of traditional ladder spots. And I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't think we're there yet. But maybe three-handed, do you kind of have to play a bit more for the win than you would in the usual tournament? Is that does that sound right? Yeah, I think that's a pretty, yeah, pretty good good thinking. And there are some courses now. You know, some of these these coaching sites they have programs. I'd be very curious to hear Ike or Pads and some of these guys too to, to really go in. I wonder how many. Now it's interesting. Do you think James we will see on party poker stops on Tritons on some bigger buy and stuff? Do you think the knockouts like I I was like, what about the Triton uh, million making it a knockout? Like that would imagine how fun that would be. Don't you like think? But seriously, think about it. Like you could probably get the field up to like 1.5x because like if you're playing a 500 or a 1 mil buy-in and you know you're going to get like a quarter of your buy-in back that's decent percentage right. of the time or even half like it's kind of cool and it makes it super fun like uh especially at that level you know if you could throw in like uh you know 100k or 250k bounty like i, I mean i don't can you think of anything more exciting than a, than a million pound knockout like i mean come on i, I don't know I'm, i can't I, maybe plo make it I'm a plo you, knockout I'm, one mil <laughs> the PLO one mil knockout. Jeff's dropping it on here. Yeah. Come back to live poker with yeah. a bang. Let's let's sort this out. Well, I'm I'm with I'll you. you I, I think, and I, I yeah. I think but, between uh, between Trite and a party event, the obviously we see these progressive knockouts um, online. It's very easy to do. The computer just goes bang. You're worth this. You're worth this. Live, we're going to need a little bit of advancement in technology because you need to see what everyone's worth. But we're not far away from that, Jeff. Think of all the things that have come into poker over the last few years, like the likes of the shot clock and, and time banks and this kind of stuff. It's it's not that unreasonable. We can't have a centralized system running through like the the shot clock pads that, sh that show um, like bounties and stuff. I think it's I think it's doable, man. I think it's I, I think that'll be the next big thing that comes in is is this kind of uh, big live progressive knockout. It's 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 going to be difficult, but. Someone's going to do it, Jeff. I, I, I'd, I'd like to bet on, on party being the ones who do it because the players are going to love yeah. it, right? How, how cool is that going to be, playing this kind of event live? You just just see yeah, the number no, of runners. Uh... We get, you get more entries, man. Yeah. And like you say, you just if you're wondering about taking a shot, uh, you say people will be more likely to pony up the million. I'm with you because you've got a decent chance of getting at least some return. It effectively lowers the binds. And we saw that in the in the summer with the, the WBT... Uh, knockout championship it was a 3k jeff and uh, if you remember we had um daniel smith not the american one but the irish one who <clears throat> he won a seat he won a 3k seat and he was like which event do i choose i'll pop for the i'll pop for a 3k knockout because hey if i knock someone out i get like 750 back right like i get a reasonable chance of winning some money ends up winning four hundred thousand dollars and beating managlosa heads up for a wpt title <laughs> that's the, that's the beauty yeah so, so much fun. Uh, Gus? It, it is. It, 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 it makes a ton of sense. I mean, it's great. It's just great. I, I think they're, I think you're, the, the point is the logistics, especially the progressive. How do you do it with Whoa. progressive knockout and, and figuring the way out? But, um, Gus, in there from Gus ends up folding there with the flop top pair. Duff overbet jamming turn with the gut shot on over. Gus laying it down. Wow. All right. Some stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of happening. Uh, yeah. Just happy to be here. These are one of those ones that just seem. I feel like I love this. Every time I come in, uh, it's just they're, they're they're either it's like great events, like uh, the 500 knockout, 100k. I'd say in my fun factor, that's about equivalent. A 500k WPT million dollar prize pool or the 100k. Uh, they're both fun. They're both exciting, and this is definitely we're getting a treat so far today. You never know what you're going to get, how people are going to play, but there's no one's just knitting it up, pay jumping here. At least from what I've seen, we've seen some some high level stuff, and everyone's got a hand here. Um, interesting spot. Yeah. Based on how good. Wow. So there we go. I was just saying, based on who that that is not what I thought either. What he would do, even though I love it. Twenty-one yeah, blind just... rip outlay on David with the suited ace, though. Can't think he has the best hand. 
Um, no. And the knockout I, I, is uh, probably not enough to relinquish the chip lead. I kind of like this from Gus. He's just kind of looking at David opening so many hands. King 10 suited. Like you always say, Jeff, the old risk premium was lowest. Shortest stack. Decides, so hey, like, I'm just going to rip this from the small. If he's, if he's got it, he's got it. But you, you can you can peel that hand, Jeff, from the small. It's obviously strong enough, plays quite well, but it kind of gets a little awkward. And then you've got Ben coming in from the big blind. Just decides to rip it in. Like you say, yeah, man, this this final table so far today, we've been on. We've only been online for what, less than an hour, Jeff, and it's just been non stop. Seen three bust outs. Yeah. A multitude of interesting hands. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah a, you guys watch it, man. Said it okay, best. Get... You know, that's, that's, uh, if you, in order to live, you must be willing to die. And King 10 suited one of those ones that is just, uh, it's, it's just, it's just going to get through a lot. And when it doesn't, you're going to be in okay shape a lot. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just tough when you, when you're, when you're in a, a 500, one mil prize pool and you get down to the end and then, you know, how you bust is, you bust with like a King 10 20 blind shove, but all the times it works or you double. You know, it's worth a lot, but um, you know, man, the Gustavo also could be capitalizing on. We see the Jacks flat. Maybe the people have been watching a bit. He's gonna get a little more, bit of credit right now. Uh, that he looks like he's playing post flop and playing really solid, and then you know, he just just shifts gears and and puts it in with the king high, taxi if you will. So nice hand there from uh, Gustavo. Man, I'm just I'm just bowled over. I was loving the uh, Amir Vahidi reference. Man, that was that guy. That was like the the money maker here, right? He was, I think, on the final table of the World Series. Yeah. Those guys. That's what I remember. Mir Vahidi. Yeah, that was. Nice. He had a nice segment. That was a uh, that was a nice the, the clip that that always stood out with me. Rest in peace to him. I know he passed away some years ago, but that was that was a very memorable the coverage. There's something like there's something nostalgic about that. You know, the 2003 World <laughs> Series of Poker money maker. The the characters. The the lie. Like that was kind of like when we're all getting into poker, at least from our generation, right. and and just. Uh, some great memories and the excitement, you know, as being the rounder and grinding and just kind of embarking on the poker journey as as ESPN picks up coverage and you know an amateur could win and and that whole thing. That was uh, that was that was really exciting. I don't know if it actually was Money Makers here or the next year. Maybe it was. I think it. I think you're right. I think he was Money Makers here. But look that yeah, up. I see. That was the first year I was like really aware of it. I think it was the Money Maker year. So I think that was the yeah. You know, it's interesting. I didn't know they didn't always run the World Series in, in the summertime, which is uh, what I just thought, because that's all I yeah. know. But uh, I had Moneymaker on my podcast recently, and he said that that was, I believe, in March, or it was in before the summer, and they didn't move that until later. And obviously, it, you know... It used to be yeah. April, April and May, I think it always used to be in. Like, just, just okay. in the Maybe spring, the yeah, early sometime. summer. Yep. Um... But this year, obviously, it looks like the World Series won't be in the summer, but it could be right. in the fall. So another, uh, you know, could could always change too. Maybe things. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. what I was saying earlier, Jeff. You know, kind of never know where, where tournaments going to have to fit in. Like, uh, obviously, it, the World Series of Poker is always going to be the biggest event of the year. At least, like nothing, nothing's going to change that. So everyone's going to have to kind of move around it. If you have an event, usually in maybe September, October, November time when and the World Series might be over the top of it. You you gotta move, Jeff, right? This, you can't you can't really compete with the with the World Series. I think there's gonna have to be some I, I feel like a lot of these operators, there's gonna be a lot of common sense, right? There's gonna be a lot of conversations between organizers behind the scenes. Everyone's professional, they all work together, they know each other, you know, you're gonna people are gonna talk and I, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna get plenty of good events and, and hopefully there's, there's not too much clashing. But uh I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we uh, we get back in there. And I just yes. want to I want to be over there, Jeff. I want to play some World Series, man. That's my that's my favorite. You know, I love the party events, but the World Series. It's what it's what like yeah. you say, you you and I, our generation. That and the WPT is what kind of got poker going, man. Like watching. Well, you got your you got your WPT title, so you might as well go grab a bracelet and have fun catch up with people it's also just a great socializing time right a lot of people that someone you know is at a final table usually it's just the flow and the rhythm of it all makes a lot of sense and it's uh it's just a good time definitely a good time before you get kids man i'm telling you before you get kids and go down that road <laughs> you know you gotta, gotta enjoy it like I, I actually have my you know i went every summer for like 10 years and then the last summer was covid and the year before was i uh, had my son was just born so i didn't go the whole time just went a little bit so you just you know yeah, you got to appreciate it because it's not always going to be the same. And who knows, maybe it'll be a PLL main event in, in a few, like five or 10 years. That'll be the, the new main event. But um, for now, it is what it is. And uh, no, 
Jeff's just pushing an agenda here, guys. I mean, I'm not against this agenda, but he's he's, he's going hard with it. You hear this tonight, guys? He's, he's asking for a million pound buy-in PLO tournaments. Now he's pushing for the world. She's a fucking main event being PLO. I like it. No, that's not true. A million pound PLO knockout event or the million pound tri uh, short deck knockout. I think we got to throw some knockouts in. And, and they heard it here first, James. We can say when we see it on Triton and Party <laughs> Poker, we were maybe they were thinking about it, but we got to put it out there. That, that we're yeah, they ripped us. I could see. Yeah. I could. Uh, not, that would not surprise me is the is a million pound short deck. And that would be. I can definitely see that happening. Those guys, they love that short deck. Yes. I mean, the, uh, that was getting, that was that was getting a lot of traction uh, before COVID, right? Short deck was it was all the talk. All the big events were short deck. You and I just came from Sochi before the lockdown. We were covering some short deck events there for, for party. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see whether that momentum continues uh, when when poker kind of picks back up. But my guess is it does, Jeff, in the in the high roller circuit. But um, I wonder if kind of the the wider poker community is going to be as infused with it as they were before. I, know, I kind of hope so. Yeah. I've, I've still barely played it, Jeff. I've, I've only played a, <laughs> like a few hours of it myself, but I don't know if you've played any since then. Yeah, not not in a while, but I do. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's definitely a cool game, and, and it's got some uh, it's got some traction. I could see it shooting up. I think um, you know we're, uh, we're wouldn't be surprised, like you said, to see some new new little iterations of it as well. Uh, taking a look at that 2003 main event, 839 entries. Chris Moneymaker in his first ever tournament on the Hen and Mob just wins it for 2.5 million. Also at that final table, David Singer, David Gray, Young Pak, Amir Vahidi finished sixth, Homer Ben uh, Ben Vinisti, Jason Lester, Dan Harrington, of course, the legend, Sam Farhar, Chris Moneymaker. I mean, a lot of iconic names in poker. And of course, I mean, look at Men Nguyen in 11, Dutch Boyd in 12, Freddie Deeb in 13, Marcel Luz. 14th. I mean, just the who's who, Scotty Nguyen, Howard Letter there, and also, of course, Mr. Ivy. That famous ace on the river, queen, ace queen, ace queen, the nines. Ace queen came through in a big way. I think that balances yeah. it out. If you don't remember that one, it was a uh, ace queen and nines. I think it went running, runner runner. Or it was ace queen nine. The river was an ace. And, it um, came uh, a that, that. yeah. It came a uh, it came queen queen bit, doesn't it? And and Phil Ivy peels with the two nines, spikes the yeah. nine against money maker. They get it in, and then an ace board just rips off on the river. And like yeah, I mean that just changed it changed. Massively, obviously, a huge pot with 10 left. And I was thinking you mentioned Dan Harrington there because Dan Harrington made the final the next year again, didn't he? He's, he went back to back final tables in the main event, which is pretty incredible. Obviously, like you say, 839 that year, but I think the following year was massive filled. Um, filled was like doubling or tripling each year at that point. Um, okay, yeah, 2004, yeah, so two and a half thousand entries comes fourth in the Greg Raymer year. Wow, what a run that was back to back final tables. Mr. Harrington on hold him. That's uh, man. He was you know, funny. Dominic Nietzsche had him had him on today. He was saying that's who he learned. Like that's that was because I was I was I'm always interested in what the great players who had great results early on, like in the er, mid 2000s and early you know 2009, 10, what they were doing. So there wasn't really this information we have in courses and programs and things. Um, but he he mentioned Dan Harrington. That was what he read, like the books he read. And I actually never read his, but uh, I, I did the Theory of Poker. Mike Sklansky, that was kind of the book I, I went to. But uh, so many people read Dan Harrington and what he did. And what his results were insane. Like he won the, I think, you know, final tabling the main numerous times. And, um, you know, really, uh, really some unbelievable results. Yeah. Uh, I meant the Harrington Holden book, man. That was the, that was, those are the books. Yeah, it's a... Uh... You see, he won it. What, he won it in '95, third in 2003, fourth in 2004. It's pretty, uh, pretty absurd. Yeah, those those are the books, man. When they came out, that changed everything. And I remember he was the first person, and it's funny now because obviously everyone looks at it now, and you know people have got their um, their randomizers and all this. And, and back then, in in the, early, the mid 2000s, he's writing a book where he was like, right, I look at my. I look at my watch, and if the the second hands in the bottom half of the face, then I'll like I might limp with my aces, and if it's the top, there, you know all this kind of stuff. And he was doing that like <laughs> twelve years before everyone else. Jeff, he was he was the first one to do that kind of stuff, or well, at least the first one to kind of uh, put that in as strategy. Yeah, Gus, yeah, going for a little block here, Jeff, with the uh, with the top pair. As, as thankfully, players slowed a little here, guys. They were going, they were going a little too fast for my liking. 
to stop this final table, but the hands are starting to uh, chill out a little bit. Yeah, actually, uh, there's, I see someone uh, watch the future market going. Um, Mark Newhouse, of course, did back to back final tables, didn't he, in the main event with huge fields. What, like six, seven thousand players a piece? I think, in fact, Jeff, didn't he come? He came ninth in both of them, I think. Is that right? Impossible. It's, it's actually impossible. He went back to back hmm. ninth. Yeah. Pretty, pretty strong. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember, I think he, he made a he made a great tweet on the on day one of the, the second one where he says, uh, I'm not going to finish ninth again. He's like, oh, main event, here we go. I'm not finishing ninth again. And then, sure enough, finished his ninth again. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty, I don't know, that's hard. I, I, I'd take it, I'd sign, right? If you asked me my main event, if I could sign right now and make it twice in ninth, I guess I would just take it. But uh, I don't know, uh, it's pretty pretty special. Yeah, 13 and 14 it was. There we go. Wow. Six and a half thousand. Yeah, six and a half thousand, both of them, basically. Jakobsen and Ryan Reesius. Wow. Yeah, you take it. Jeff. I wonder what the actual it. odds of that are. What are the odds are? Not just like final table, like going nine nine. It's got to be. It's like you couldn't even do it if you. I mean, obviously, even saying about trying, like it's just like what the <laughs> right. Heck? I mean, that's that feeling when you get knocked out again in ninth has to just be pretty surreal. But um, yeah, taking two November two two final tables in the main event in your lifetime. That's uh, definitely going to be above average. Yeah, and like the way things are now, you just hope to one day have to sweat, one day get get in the mix like that. It's, it's so hard to do. You just do it back to back. It's exciting stuff. I just want my sweat, Jeff. I've never had my sweat in the main event. You know, my uh, when's when's it gonna be? It might, it might never be. You know, that's the thing. That event, you take one event, thousands of runners, you might never get your chance. But... Yeah. Yeah. I um, what was that? I, I had a spe that year actually. The year Merson won, it was pretty special because I went. I, I'll the I, the guy who finished third. I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he knocked me out on a three outer. Merson knocked me out on a flip in the 10k six max and won it. And then the 10k heads up, I got fifth in the in the, I think it was uh, I forget who won it. Won. So I almost in the three 10k events I played, I got knocked out by the winner, winner, and third in the main. Um, it was just kind of like wow. it, was, it was pretty pretty salty. But I've never I've never had a great run in the main either. That was like two two twenty third. I got in the main, and that was my deepest run. You know, it was pretty deep, but not That's... not like the room collapsed yeah. and there's like ten eight tables left. Right. And, you know, like Matt Waxman who gets top fifty every year, and some guys just go there and and you know just seem to go super deep in it. But I, I haven't had that uh, the room collapse yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the folding up the tables, the. The chips, everything echoes. They put on the banners. Yeah, that's. I'm not being close to that. Monday. Monday, Jeff, I'll get my sweat. Yeah, it's all good. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully soon. You never know. It's uh, it seems like though it's it's never too far removed. Like I, I don't know if you feel that way, but people who are at the final table generally now in the last like five or ten years, I generally feel like I know someone pretty well or even have a friend. I've had a I've had one sweat, like good sweat, at the final table at the piece, but. Um, what, what about you in, in terms of swaps or any pieces? Have you ever had a good good good, good kicker there? Yeah, I mean, I've had some some friends deep. Obviously, like you say, you're always bound to have someone in the mix. But uh, no, I, I've had I had uh, the closest I got was let me check what year it was because I'll see they got they got very deep. But I swapped with a uh, Paul Volpe, Paul Cheese, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember I was I, I pulled the flight. Um, well, I was getting ready to, to fly back to the UK um, at the end of the World Series, and I was actually sitting there in the airport, and he was he was still in the mix. And I'm trying to look now where he finished. So I think this is the one here. Yeah, I think it might be that same year, the Greg Merson year. I think. But I'm sitting there in the airport, and I'm like about to board the plane. I'm like, okay, he's still in here. He's doing well. And literally, the last refresh I, I pressed before getting on the plane, there he was, busting out in like 20th place. Mm in the main event and I had like a little swap with him. I was like, man, that'd have been a that'd have been a nice one, but it wasn't a beat. Other than that, no, no, like no one's ever no one's ever got close to me, man. It's I've not had the joy. Like you just need a, a little one percent ball is good enough, isn't it? You get like the Yeah hundred K for a one percent. Yeah. That's just, that's all you need. Like I, I've never had a bar bar pool. I've never had the the real sweat. 
Yeah, Jacob Balsinger is the one. That's how he got third that year in 12. Knocked me out of standard spot, like ace three, ace two. Should have been probably a chop, but yeah, it's just heartbreaking to uh, to go out and and uh, when you get deep and I don't know. The main event there always feels like there's something you could do, right? Like it just feels like it's in your control. It's two hour levels. It's deep. You hear about guys coming back from two blinds um, and winning and stuff. So it's just like always feels like it's you know you can uh, kind of control your own destiny to some degree there. Yeah, it's, you're right. It does feel like you don't. You, it's the one time you feel like if you busted out, you must have done something wrong. <laughs> like they give you, they give you every every opportunity. Like it's also it's genuinely sad when you bust. Like I, I'll never forget McLean Carr. It was one of my very close friends and one of my like guys in my core group of, of guys. And uh, you actually look like McLean a bit. Like you have the same like same kind of. Uh, you remind me of McLean also. Very very high energy. Uh, you know you're you're. You guys, pull, you guys fire hard and play a lot, and he's uh, he just takes it really hard when he lost. Like I, I was sharing a room with him one of the first years of the World Series. And I remember like coming back, and it was like six o'clock at dinner break, and I came to the room, and you know he was in there, the lights off in his bed, in a in a, in a twelve pack on his chest, and it was just like one of the more depressing <laughs> things I ever saw. And he was so upset. You know, McLean's won millions of dollars, he's winning high rollers, doing whatever, but he was legit yeah. in there with like a you know I had to tie to talk to him, and he was he was in it just. That's kind of how I always remember busting the main. Like it, it knocks the wind out of you. You know, you don't know what to do, who to talk to. You go like, I've, I found myself pacing around or in the hallway, sitting outside, and you know, like, oh, you don't, you don't understand. You know, you don't understand like what happened or how, like, why did this happen? But um, anyway, yeah, the main event's a sad one to bust. Yeah, it was, I think it was Dora Bronson who used to say it's the worst day of the year. Every year is the day you get busted out the main event, and um, I think that's pretty true. Gustavo here, Jeff. Look at this. We might have a little action. Got the aces popped it up. Dust peel from the big flops gut shot, backdoor spades, a little over. This one's certainly not done yet for a third pot. I'm guessing that the, the stack depth the way it is is just gonna be a call. I'm playing three mil, six mil now, of course. Does look in the call and the bricks turn. Um assume Gus is gonna <coughs> size up a little bit here, Jeff. Just set him up. For a river shove. Guess I need to yep. 30, 30 plus. Anything around there. Seems to make sense. Okay, 39. Duff will give that up. Guys, I see some of you asking in the chat how you can win these tickets. Well, we give them out every hour at the top of the hour. They're $11 tickets. There's 10 of them. All you have to do is follow us right here on Twitch. So if, you're, if you're watching someone else, come on over to Twitch. Click follow on the channel. We're going to give out some of those tickets. All we have to do is click the follow. That's it. We're going to we're going to chase you down if you're lucky enough to win. We're going to get you details. We're going to get the ticket paid to you on Party Poker. So of course, you will need a real money Party Poker account as well. And if you've got one of those, why not join us in the free roll taking place in a little over ten minutes over on Party. Password is We Love Jeff. You can find it, guys. It's the uh, the WPT 500 free roll given away. A 530 euro uh, Irish open seat and another 500 euros in cash. Man, Jeff, that's the that's another one. I don't know if, if you've if you played the Irish Open, have you made if you made it over for that one? Have you been yes. over when yep, that's on? I have. Great event. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah that's this that's some fun, right? <laughs> like the, the it's that's some event. Yes. No, it's uh, that's that's definitely what great stop if you haven't gone. I actually went to the Cliffs of Moher. And, and enjoyed a lot over there uh, in Ireland. It's cold. I think I went one time away. It was February, but it was uh, enjoyed it. Beautiful uh, place, and, and just yeah, got, you gotta go. You gotta go to Ireland one time if you're traveling the circuit. You gotta at least get over there, and then probably make it a yeah. you know a, a standard stop. Look at look at this, Jeff. David getting frisky with a jack three suited in position. Uh, pardon, in the cutoff opening up, Armand flooding in position. Two big stacks. Out flopping our man, both making top pair, Jeff. We could, we could see the first little uh, skirmish between these two chip leaders. Oh, this is definitely Indeed. one of those. Uh, the Diakiri suited also looks just kind of looks scary. It's got it's got that wrap possibility. You know the backdoor club backdoor. Anytime you got backdoor right. galore, it's always uh, it's always in play. You know, there's a lot of cards that are going to keep make it even spicier than it is. And these guys are clearly in front. Uh, King Jack kind of one of those spots where you just got to be. Thinking on the Jack Five Four Rainbow, you're pretty good. Go small, no need to go big. And, and David here, um, you know he's uh, 
One of the problems with this, when you do open up, you get play, you hit a top pair, you're even sort of just guessing around and pretty brick turn on, uh, not gonna make super interesting, at least from the, the equity perspectives, but you know, King Jack still, you gotta, everyone's, everyone wants to be cautious here. There's no real point to, uh, to go nuts with a, with just top pair. And you guys are, you know, number one and two securely. Yeah, cools. First of all, he ends up kind of counterfeiting Jeff, you know, finds that three too little too late. You see way up against it here. Yeah, I see guys. Yeah, those who are asking in the chat about the ticket giveaways, press follow. In terms of how we're going to know you're on party, we're going to contact you through Twitch. So just press that follow button. And if you're lucky enough to win one of those tickets, we'll be in contact with you and we'll get them paid to you on party. So you haven't got to worry about linking your account or anything like that, any other steps. Just simply press follow. I'm just looking to get you guys on here. Man, we've got so much good content uh, on this channel, not just these streams, of course, but we have loads of the challenges, especially those Daily day Legend challenges that I know some of you have been very much enjoying watching. Look at this, Jeff. I love it. David going for the kind of block with top pair on the river. Armin realizing that, hey, King Jack's got to be good here. Going to take him upstairs. And this is a tough spot for David. Man, you, you block the kind of hands that are going to do this. You've, you've got a jack. Check called. Went check, check. Yeah, high level. High level. I think, you know, these are something I, I think I'm guilty of too in spots like this where I may, you know, a player puts a bet like this, King Jack, you know, you're like, realizing you should be good almost all the time there, but you're like, oh, what if you hit the, this or, you know, but that's where you're just being in tune to the game and realizing with that sizing, what David likely has and that you just have a, a value hand there. So, you know, nice, nice spot going to extract some value. As it turns out, he doesn't get called. David ends up making a nice hold with top pair and he also doesn't go to showdown. Uh, but, but now Armin is in the lead here. He has got the chip lead and position on David. So Armin in a really good position at this final table all of a sudden. Yeah, and, and it has has that seat, like you say, yeah, now reclaims the lead of David, who was just off to a flyer at the start of this final table. First kind of a bad thing that's happened to him, really. Up, up, up on the button, Ben, in the big check three suit. That's the hand. The hand at the moment, Jeff. He's, uh, he's going to peel and completely miss this one. Stuff a second pair and the diamond. Yeah, certainly uh, we couldn't keep up that pace, Jeff. We started out with uh, three knockouts at the start of the final table. Things settled down a little. We definitely have these two bigger stacks, three shorter stacks. Lines are beginning to creep up. We're at three, six at the moment. I think we go three and a half, seven next. No, no missing levels here for WPT 500. We have stretched it out to 24 minute levels. Which I, think, I think it's nice, Jeff. You know, they, they play the day one, day two, 16 minute levels. Roughly around when the final table starts, we can switch to 24 and give them some more play when the money's really big. Uh, seven fives asking why we can't see the bounties. It's just, uh, just the way the replayer is. Unfortunately, guys, we can't see the bounties. But I can tell you that at the moment, uh, David Lopez is worth 13 grand if you knock him out. Armand's worth five. And then Ben, Dub, and Gustavo are worth between 2,800 and 3,500. So not too much separating those those three but I, I will give you guys that information kind of as these as these pots develop if we get some interesting spots i'll uh i'll try and throw it out there and, uh we can try and work out whether things are value or not because jeff i mean I, I i'm still very much in my empathy of these bounty tournaments so it's it's i i you got the kind of uh intuitive idea of okay well if it's close i should probably call against to knock people out and if it's but I don't, I don't know the fine details. And I, my guess is, I mean, Patrick Lennon said last week, the kind of guess is that a lot of people don't really know. Everyone's still trying to kind of figure it out. It's so intricate, these positions. Yeah, no, it is. And, and, you know, it's funny to hear Dominique, I'm just referencing him. He was on my podcast earlier today. And obviously he's got 18 million earnings, one of the best players in the world. And just talking about how many mistakes he sees in the ICM with the world's best. And, and, and I mean, for himself too, saying he's learning and, and doing stuff. So there's a lot of room to uh, improve and, 
a lot of a lot of different styles you'll see and that's why again poker is so fun so beautiful you know there's there's always the gto which the book might say is right but then there's exploits and then there's little nuances that can cause you to the flat versus three bet and, and why you should or shouldn't and you know some people are just feeling extra frisky on on the day so you just never know and that's why it's so fun it's the perfect combination of luck and skill and as we know it one of the greatest games there is is poker and, and we're glad you guys are here let us know where you're from watching over 4,000 on the twitch chat right now fired up to see who's going to take home six figures in a wpt 500 title we are having a good time and we've seen some uh very fast paced action we're down to five things have slowed a bit but that's uh that was the, the par for the course after some eliminations and the stacks getting a little bit deeper yeah that was a violent start guys that was insane the opening we had things matching it a little deeper yeah but nice to see where they're from jeff let's let's see what's going on people all around the world it's a global game isn't it it's a game that needs needs no translation needs nothing everyone knows what's going on in poker oh uh, he's two going at it again david and armin in limp pop but both with a gut shot checks through the flop david improves to a double gut shot now um, six one nine will do the job Guys, we have that free roll going off in five minutes. We're coming up to our first break. My last chance to warn you about it. Please do head on over to Party Poker. Password is We Love Jeff. It is, of course, WPT 500 free roll. Uh, Irish Open opener seat and 500 euros in cash being given away as the river runs out of break. Armin called here. Jeff with that gut shot. And his queen high is going to be good. Let's see if uh, <laughs> David lets him see the showdown or... Is he going to follow up the turn bet with another bet here? I, I like to see a bet. He doesn't have any spades. You know, his opponent could have a spade draw or something and just, you know, jack high, not the best hand. So nice, nice, uh, nice bet here from from David and, and, and goes for it and realizing he's not going to win with jack high. So uh, great play. High level. Yeah. And he, he does win the pot. And Jeff, and kind of a key one uh, for the, the parity of the tournament between those two big stacks. All right, guys. Myself and Jeff are heading off on our first break evening. Please press the follow button because on the flip side of the break, we're giving away those tickets. If you haven't pressed follow, you can't win a ticket. All right, we'll see you in five minutes.
All right, guys, welcome back to this, the WPT 500 knockout final table. So myself and my main man, Jeff Gross, joining me for this one. As Jeff, we we saw a fast start, man, but things have, things have slowed a little. These guys, have, uh, they're playing for some big money. Five left. Yes, it is. Uh, it, you know, ICM, all the above, the, it comes into play. I think people are realizing now the pay jumps, it's a little different. We saw eight, seven, six, not saying they're not big, but the the scope the the strength of it is different you know now we get down to five and you see the real they're you know, talking about 500 buy-in so it's big jumps between fifth fourth fourth to third and then up into second of course first going to be roughly double what you see so it should be around 150 grand roughly to first maybe a little bit more depends how the bounty shake out but yeah a lot to play for and these guys all can taste it they realize you know we saw the the ace jack fold from ben when he got shoved on by armin with the king queen realizing that you know one hand can make the difference and, and, and a double could put you in contention to win it. So really not a lot separating even the Ooh. chip leaders in, in the sort of second group here. And and Jeff, first Wide hand open. back, look at this. Ben opening ace nine, flops top pair against Armin in the big, who's flopped top two. We may see uh, a very significant pop for a while right here. Yeah. I, I guess it all kind yeah. of depends how fast Armin plays it, right, Jeff? I mean, does he... Does he want to go for a check raise on an A7-6 rainbow, or does he play this slow, do you reckon? I mean, let's see what hands are our draws, like the 8-9, 8-5, 4-5. Uh, so it's just kind of one of those things when you um, you have to decide if your army, what do you think your opponent has? Does he just have air? Does he ever just have a queen jack or something like that? But what is it? what do you continue shelling? So I think when you weigh all the possibilities, check raising makes more sense. You hope your opponent does have the ace, um, you know, and, and maybe even just, I think, logically it makes sense but it, you could definitely call i could see going either way i just kind of felt like check raise makes sense in this scenario realizing too the, the that he can put some pressure on um with with some semi bluffs that uh is going to put ben in a tough spot and this is a really tough spot as well with when you have ace nine here so he does go ahead and call uh four peels off right and like you're saying obviously calling here with the ace nine he has to call at least once but the nine kind of works against right we want armor to have Five nine, you wouldn't to have eight nine sometimes. Obviously, five eight's just got there in this instance. Three five is even got there. If you had like three five of hearts, maybe Armin bluffs with that just gets there. Now Armin just goes for a shove of just a shade over pot and Ben again. Wow. I guess I mean there are some hands we can beat here, they could, like the eight nine nine ten of diamonds. These kind of hands nine five with diamonds, perhaps this. There are some hands. This isn't straight yeah. forward. Also, could have four, I, I think he's going right? to fold, Jeff. Look. Wow. Yeah. Holds. I wasn't sure. I just really don't know. I guess it just, man, it's such a great bet. And the reason that you know Armin's capable, we saw him jam the king queen earlier, which was, you know, again, kind of standard, but also a nice spot. Like, it's a really tough spot. I like the fold, but, man, I wouldn't have blamed him for calling there. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, gets away from it that. Like you're saying, Jeff, the the money bubbles, man. He's he's third in chips. He's still ahead of Gus, still ahead of Duff. In position against those two as well, so it's kind of a good spot to go. As we just see the blinds go up as well, which is which is relevant because, hey, if you're Ben, you want to be sat there with a good hand behind those two shoving. As we get down to blow twenty bigs, that's more likely. And, and Armin, again, Jeff, this is I guess something we see more in these bounty tournaments: the the open rip for twenty effective blind on blind because. You always just want to win the blinds, but if you don't, you, you want to have a shot of knocking knocking someone out, right? We saw Armin do it with the 8-9 suited, make the straight flush. Does it here with A7 off. Tries to get 
it through and does. Guys, the free roll is off and running. Please do head on over to Party Poker. The password's top of the screen there. It is We Love Jeff. It is a WPT 500 free roll. We're giving away that Irish Open opener seat and another 500 euros in cash. So please do check it out. Look at this, Jeff. Here we go. Armin with the chip lead. He's going to start uh, starts playing some games with David. Yeah, this is a great seat for Armin as they're one and two. And uh, <laughs> this is this is nice. We've seen a lot of flatting and we've seen now a, uh, a little bit of a light light bluff here and just absolutely, absolutely great spot. So uh, nice, nicely done and going to pick it up. Yeah, 496 Time separates himself, on. 500 to 400. So a decent, decent lead. And if we look at Ben, Gustavo and Duff, they really are all tied in here. Yeah, it's massive as well. Bing to the left of David with that chip stack, as opposed to before when David had it and had Armin on his left. Slightly concerned now, Armin really just gets to have some fun. Of course, this one with Ace King, uh, a little too easy almost. And uh, guys, of course, at the top of the hour, every hour we do those giveaways. I do have the winners of those tickets and i'll tell you when we get a break in play here for a second when there's a hand not going on i'll relay it to you we have done that draw if you're wondering what i'm talking about well just press follow right here on twitch every hour we give away 10 of those 11 dollar tickets all you have to do is follow us on twitch Have to check back, Jeff. On the eight, the eight nine five, we we know that favors the big blind, right? So it makes sense to check back. Ace of spades as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a still kind of a interesting one here. This is kind of a, a tricky dynamic because. You know, Armin's in a, in a tough spot here. Does he want to just play bully because of the ICM? Also just has a lot of showdown value with Ace-King being the best hand. So has a little bit of a decision, does decide, just check back. And Ben's got to love that, right? Because he's got a very vulnerable hand. Not something that he doesn't want to just stick on there with the five. Um, I don't know. I could see going either way there from Armin. But I, ultimately, Ace-King just beats a lot of hands. I think that was sort of his rationale that he was just okay to, to uh, check it down now. Now, on this particular run out, I think the news sets in that Armin may realize that his opponent might have a little bit of showdown value. Um, right. And kind of a tricky one. I'm trying to kind of tricky here to think what to do. Let's just check. And Ben's going to be ecstatic to see that. Yeah, big pickup for him. Very big. Any pot at this point. Worthy. See you guys in the chat. Some of you busting out the free row already. Come on. We can get this going. Oh, you, you, we're, posting our, we're posting our brags, actually. Pardon that. We're posting our chip, chip stacks. So on here, guys, the free roll is off and running on party. We have 1,375 players in there at the moment. We've got till the end of the hour to get in that one password on screen. I said I was going to give uh, some of these tickets away. So let me just tell you guys, the first five winners, there are 10 of you who have won this hour. First five are, uh, I'm sure we can, the sound's going to get through, it is. Um, HSND ban. 100 gram Ytrom, Scaramouche 24, Star Ladder Promo, and Dura and Lima. Those five are the first winners, and I'm pretty sure I, I've got a feeling. I'm going to post those names in the chat for you guys now so you can read them rather than me mangle the pronunciation. I'm pretty sure Star Ladder Promo, you won one a couple of weeks ago, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm going out there, Jeff. I think that's, that's a pretty good bink if you've won two. There's, there's, there's a fair amount of the followers on this channel, but I've got a feeling that name has got home again. Multiple. Yeah, it, it always amazes me in giveaways, like 100, 200 plus, that I'll, I'll sometimes do stuff and I see people win multiple times. It's just like, I'm, I sometimes I wonder if they have a, a hack, or like a code or some kind of thing I don't know about, <laughs> or if they're just that lucky, because, you know, it's just like, it always blows my mind. Like, I, it almost like aggravates me a bit, but then I realized, oh, you know what? That's okay. It's okay to be, I'm just like, I'm just like, man, how could someone really win a giveaway with this many people? Twice? But it happens. People win tournaments multiple times. People are on heaters. People are on giveaway heaters. It, 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 you want to spread the love, but you got to respect the grind and, and the people that are putting the time in and, 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 and engaging in the activity. So, you know, it's uh, ultimately I'm happy for everyone, but it's nice to spread it around, right? You want to see everyone get there 
get their share. Yeah, but man, I'm, I'm loving that. If you, if you can run that good in giveaways, good luck to you. All right, the other five are uh, Geo Junior 86, Flavio 1985 26, uh, Ricky Santos 490, G Guyton Kid, and Frankie Sean. You five have also won. Names are going in the chat right now. If you just heard your name, guys, you have won tickets. Someone will be in contact with you through Twitch, so don't panic. Don't worry about what you got to do. We'll be in touch with you. Uh, simple as that. But you do need a Royal Money Party Poker account. So if you haven't got one and you just heard your name, then you should probably go ahead and make one. Otherwise, we can't pay you those tickets. Uh, Jeff, Ben's going to open the Queens here. Armin, are we going to see him through a bit? Mm. Rip the Ace Jack? I mean, from what we've seen so far, that seems like the kind of way he likes to play. From Ben. It makes sense here, right? It's slightly over 20 deep. And he does, Jeff. Go for the rip. Ben's going to call with the two queens. We have our first all in for a one. Armin spikes the ace on the flop. Runs out clean. Ben Charlotte out in fifth for 22k. Yikes. And of course, uh, Armin picks up that bounty, which was worth, I believe, around three and a half thousand. Yikes. And just uh, everyone, you got it. If you're Duff and Gustavo, that's part of the part of the equation, right? That's part of the process. Is is uh, being patient. You don't want to be the one at risk. And of course, with Queens, too good a hand there to, to relinquish and, and just, you know, unlucky. But that's part of the game, right? It's math. Things happen. You know, you can put your chips at risk. If you are covered, you are at uh, the mercy of the run out. And sure enough, the ace jack does knock out Queens and we're down to four. Wow. Yeah, he, we saw him fold the ace jack where I'm going to put him in ICM. Uh, cage with king queen off and then you know this time get a little better hand and uh, also better hand for for uh Jalo. it just didn't pan out but great great performance and getting again fifth place he took home almost twenty eight thousand dollars or maybe actually a little over that with 6600 in bounties and and as the big All stacks right. get bigger the bounties get bigger for the big stacks and i'm trying to see out of uh duff and gustavo now they have a roughly similar bounty i believe on their head so you know around five grand, yeah. uh, 10 buy-ins which is still pretty significant yeah they're about the same was it david with a lot of army just would have popped up a fair amount there and um, i think yes yeah, add things to look yeah armin's up to just under seven thousand the two shorts is about 2800 a piece and david about just a little under thirteen thousand. his bounty's worth at this moment with four left but of course 32k locked up as well jeff Everyone now guaranteed $32,000. But like you say, man, that, that first place is misleading. 76K. It's going to be a lot more than that. Need all those bounties to go in there. Uh, I see someone in the chat asking, can you still register the free roll? You most certainly can, my friend. Head on over to Party Poker. WPT 500 free roll. Passwords at the top. We love Jeff because we most certainly do. Get in the mix. As Yikes. We, we got some cards here, Jeff. <laughs> we see how Armin plays. King Queen off suit from the big blind. We're going to see Duff open Ace King suit here. Gustavo, Ace four suit on the button. Jeff, he could do some stuff. Oh yeah, no, this is uh, this is definitely one. And actually, if you think about it, it's one of those oh, spots well. too where if you were oh well, that's uh, he just went for effective shove. So yeah. interesting though, Armin. If King Queen for one thirty, what's that? Nice. It's a bit much, but for the five k. Um, a commanding chip lead. I don't know. I mean, you start talking about bounty hunting and, and risking, and he still would be the chip leader. But I don't think he, you know, I don't think he, he uh, is going to want to. Um, I don't know. I mean, actually, this is pretty close. Yeah. For the five k. Uh, right. The, the bounty is what makes it interesting, isn't it, Jeff? In a normal tournament, we'd be looking at this game. Okay, your king queen offsuit is just a little too weak. You got to get away from this. But with the bounty, things get a little bit more complex. Um, yeah, I'm glad he still folds. I, I think. I think. 
we still got to fold, but it's certainly a lot closer than it, it might appear in a regular tournament. Yeah, yeah, really close. Be curious on that one, actually. But I think, uh, you know, also he just got his blood flowing. Ace Jack off the Queens, got there one. <laughs> Start figures probably don't have the best hand. So it's like, do I want to gamble? Hopefully he's got a pair. Gonna be dominated sometimes. And, um, you know, he's just kind of enjoying life as the massive chip leader. Again, you're gonna get to really leverage stacks here against the two short stacks where also they do actually have, I mean, this is a big jump too. So we're talking 16, almost $17,000 in a jump, which is 34 buy-ins. It's a lot for, for Duff and Gustavo. So a lot to consider. Yeah. Duff just gonna jam over Armin's limp with this King Jack suited. Interesting. Right, that King Jack suit. Sometimes Jeff may see uh, some players just go for the raise call, or sometimes you know it's the check back. You want to keep in hands like Armin had Jack Seven offsuit, but besides just uh, just the rifle in on Armin. But uh, I mean Armin's raised a few times from the small we've seen, so maybe just deciding, hey, look, this guy's potentially uh, not balanced enough. I think he's just going to fold a lot. I pick up so much. I want to keep myself out against against Gus. I don't want to potentially bust post flop by checking back. Now I'm in popping it up with the three four offsuit, Jeff. The chip leader just gets to have some fun. Put it on these short stacks. Yeah, I'm really I'm really impressed with Armin's game. I thought he's played phenomenally well. Of course, it does help, and it's just, some seems to feel that way sometimes, right? When you're playing well and you just get a little extra luck, right? The ace jack all of a sudden finds himself ace jack the queens gets a members bounce, but. No, all, all in all, uh, just thought he's played played phenomenal, and no no doubt that he's chipped up. You saw the jack ten off three bet. He's he's his re raised with the king jack on the jack high on the paired board. Just kind of really seems to know where he's at, know what's going on, have have a plan for every scenario, and and just seems in tune to the to the game. So I, I like I like what he's doing, and he's got the best seat right now. He's got a field day on these two stacks on the on the, his left that are short, and then David with the, the next. Uh, very vulnerable stack right now, right? David doesn't want to get involved with Armin, and, and he's gonna have to tighten up his open to bet. Yeah, oh. it's King Three getting punished, but yeah, I'm with you. I mean, why not? Let's just keep opening until they until they stop you, right? You know, you know, Gus and Duff are gonna have to play fairly snug. Gus is, well, Duff more so now, like you say, just wins that pot, so now is that much further ahead of Gus. You know the risk premium, Jeff, and well, maybe Gus is going to rip this. And what we're looking at 15, 16 blinds. And the king queen offsuit here is a different different prospect than it was a second ago for 20 blinds um, against the cutoff raise. Against the button for 15, 16. This is. This may well be. Okay, he's gone for the min raise. So I'd imagine we're going to see. Well, we're going to see something from Armin, right? We're certainly not going to see a fold. It's gonna be a show. Well he did this. this with, uh, he did this last time for more chips. He's got the chip leads. This is the perfect scenario to rip it uh, and and get a lot of folds. And again, against a pair, he'd be happy to run it. So I mean, he's uh, he's gonna tee this one up, I Ooh. think. And then I'm wrong. So you know, it's hard. It's hard to be <laughs> hard to be. I, I, I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a bit shocked on that. But I guess at the same time, him and Duff don't have the exact same stack. But I just think it's a a good uh, one of those. I'd be surprised if that's not just the best play there. But what do you think? A little surprised. Well, uh, this is the th I was kind of surprised that Gus didn't just rip the two fives in the first place, Jeff, from the button. It seems like a weird hand. You know, you kind of expect when people open jam this kind of stack size that a hand like fives fits into that range quite nicely. Maybe the fact he didn't rip kind of confused Armin a little bit. He was like, okay, this guy's probably a little bit more polarized. So maybe I just want to flat with King Queen. If I hit my hand, I'm probably good and I avoid doing it in when I'm crushed, but. I don't know. Yeah, both both plays have surprised me a little bit here. It ends up the situation where Gus is going to bet a third pot on the turn. I I, I just I, I thought it was going to be a rip pre Jeff and a, and a call from Armin in the big. That's that's, that's what I thought was going to happen in this hand. But he check calls yeah. King High on the turn. Interesting. All Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know where he thinks Gus has a kind of one of those playable hands, right? Like a Jack Ten or. Queen 10, something like this, that decides to min raise rather than jam button. And he thinks maybe somehow King Queen is still good here, but probably rules out most of the ace highs. Jeff, those those are pretty likely to jam button. Yeah. 
may be a little confused to see the two pipes at the showdown, but that's what he's going to see, and he loses the pot. Yeah, well, interesting. I love it. I, I'm actually, I'm really enjoying this. This has been a very enjoyable final table. It's uh, It's been a lot, of, a lot of everything. We've seen some get there. We've seen some pressure. We've seen some over bets. seen some big folds. Uh, some nice calls like it's uh, it's really giving us a bit of everything yeah most certainly has there's uh david popping up the button ace queen duff with deuce five clubs in the big i'm just gonna give it up Jeff. Deuce 5 sued, maybe in some other situations might call there, but he does have a few more chips than Gus. I'm just looking to outlast at the moment. And uh, yeah, good Guys. spot here again. Stacks, just one of those hands to put pressure on. Ace 5 suited. Um, gonna, gonna get some, gonna get more folds than usual, but 30%, but every, every hand but aces. Doesn't mind if somehow someone yeah. wakes up there. Yeah, and these two are going to fold some better hands for sure. Outlasting each other 20 picks deep. I like that, man, Armand's, uh, it feels like he's like a little bit more, I don't know whether this is going to knock out Jeff or what, well, but Armand feels like he's almost a little bit more, more our, our kind of uh, original era online poker, man. You just get the chip lead, you get good hands on the button, you just start ripping into these short stacks. Like, it's, it's how we used to do it. Right, I'm I'm enjoying watching it. And here he is coming in with a five-three suited. Does it just pe put pressure on him when you got the chip lead? Man, you get to play all the hands. Just gonna play the eight-nine suited from the small. My feeling is not. And then David with deuce three suit from the big. He is deep, but you don't really want to be giving up too much to arm. And yeah, he does fold. I like it. And there you go. It gets, gets one through with 5-3 suited. Love to see it. Guys, head on over to Party Poker. The free roll is off and running. WPT 500 free roll. The password is, of course, we love Jeff. We're giving away that Irish Open opener seat to the winner. And we have another 500 euros in cash to give out. Please do get in the mix. I'm in there. I'm, I'm scrapping around Jeff. I'm not making any ground up at the moment. Who knows? A little spin up incoming. You're in there. You're multi. You're multitasking, huh? What's your state? What's the, what's what's the current amount of people in there? What's happening? What what are you? How are you doing? You feeling, uh, you feeling good or you're kind of? Man, I've got them. I've got them where I want them. Man, we've got 1,500 entries so far. I've I'm doing alright. I've got 85k. You start with 100. I'm just I'm just chilling. Blind's just gone up to 501k. Yeah, I'm getting them figured out, Jeff. You know, I'm I'm learning their tendencies. I can't quite uh get chips together as quickly as Ike did last week. <laughs> Musky Moo in the chat asking for tickets. Man, we're giving tickets away as well. But it's just just down to chance, I'm afraid. You just got to click follow on this Twitch channel. And you're in with a chance of winning one of those tickets every single hour. We give out 10 of them. Money for nothing, Jeff. You know, we get to watch these guys battle out. WPT 500, big title on the line. And we... You get to watch it for free, and we and we we're gonna pay you to watch. I mean, ultimately, you've got these free rolls. I love it. I love all that. It's it's hard to beat that combination. One nice final table to sweat, whole cards up, and then you get a little get a little play on the side, and you don't you got nothing risking there. It's a, it's a pretty good scenario. So win win scenarios. That's uh that's what what's sort of about here. Party Poker TV making things happen, and we're getting to see some high level stuff. So you may not know these aren't these aren't necessarily household names, at least from what I know, but they are playing a very very strong brand of poker so far I've, i really like what i've what i've seen who do you think gets it done james at this point it's hard to bet against armin but you think uh think anyone can kind of pull it out if someone gets a double you like their shot like I, anyone anyone you're pulling for i mean uh, yeah it was kind of before we came on i, I was sort of mentioning obviously armin Razai, kind of one of the better known perhaps maybe for us europeans at least uh players on this funnel but then i was very impressed early on with with Gus, he's uh, he, he's made some moves, but all these guys, I mean, like Charette's obviously got a pretty decent uh, resume. Uh, but mate, you, you got to kind of pump for the guy with the chips at this point, especially the way he's playing. He's he's been pretty ruthless since he got this lead. 
But who knows, man? I mean, I, I want to see a little bit more from Gus because he got away with those, got away from those jacks earlier. Where I think you and I, Jeff, both would have been out by now, right? If we had those two jacks, we'd be we'd be gone. He's he found a way to keep him in here, and he, and he made that great bluff with the queens on the river, where he, he turned he turned his flopped over pair queens into a bluff on the river against David, and that was that was that was pretty ballsy. Like that's it's not a it's not a move you see too often. Yeah, I would like to, I would like to talk with someone at a high level on that hand. That that was a very maybe the hand right, of, of, the, of the final table. Very interesting. Right, you you're even of the opinion that you know there are some there are some combinations of hands you might be up against that you're not even bluffing against because you, you could potentially get called by some worse there. Right, you're you're not 100 percent sold on that one yet. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think it was the merge, right? That's a rare word that works. I think right. he just merged it. It merged it in, and it's hard. I love a, a good merge, but a final table merge is extra special. There's not many people that go for like creative kind of you know mergey plays, if you will, or, or spots like that at a final table. Or you, you, a lot of times you're just content. You're like, all right, I got queens. You know, I might just have the best hand likely, and and uh, you know shoving there is uh, pretty pretty cool to have the nut blockers. Um, you know, very, very key cards in case the opponent. The problem is the king. Like the thing about the king is just so unlikely. I think that the opponent has a king, and that's like ultimately the hand right. you're trying to bluff like like a weak king. And how does he have a king? He like check raised, and then the king flew off on that on that board. So I don't know. But yeah, because the cool hand was uh, it was like the ten seven x king jack, and like your opponent can have you, you can potentially make them fold a hand like ten seven, but if they've got like ace ten with the ace of diamonds blocking the straight getting there blocking and up flush that's kind of the hand that maybe they end up cooling with it's weird like you say yeah it's it's a it's a it's a merge potentially that was that was a fun one if you uh if you went with us early it was very early on gustavo and, and david when david was just running running right over the table busting them out for fun ran the aces down right at the start of the final table with the nine six blind on blind yeah um, obviously relinquish a little bit of that lead Gus kind of pop it up with ace seven on the button. Yeah, David L's been quiet. I mean, again, the the stacks right now, he's kind of in a weird spot. It's you got the two short stacks. He doesn't. He wants to make sure those go out. At least one of them uh, puts their chips at risk before he does. And he's you know he's deep enough to still play, but he's got to deal with deal with the tough player here, Armin with chips on his left. So he's just kind of. You know, it's, it's also just for the same reasons, like they have jam stacks, Dub and Gustavo. So like when he's opening, he's got to deal with getting bluffed and worrying about Armin he's, or flatted and not being in opposition to pot, or he's got to worry about just getting jammed on entirely. So the reasons make a lot of sense why he's just sort of, you know, got to sit, stand pat without a, a decent, decent hand. He's going to, he's going to be less likely to come into these, um, you know, these holdings that are, that are uh, marginal. Yeah, for sure. And he does pick that one up, gets himself just ahead of Duff. And yeah, for those reasons, obviously Armand's kind of loving this spot even more. He, he kind of, David's just getting a little bit close to those two. He knows he gets a bit even more pressure on David now. I think Armand would almost like the blinds to maybe go up just that one more level for more oatmeal, put Gus and Duff uh, in spots where it gets a lot harder to peel opens. Gus is going to try and get one through here with the ace check suited and Duff in the big with 10 deuce suited. And here we go, Jeff Armin with the queen. Obviously, this is certainly going to be a raise with his stack size. Yeah, he's he's attacking the spot and again. It doesn't have to jam. It's it's interesting, right? Those hands like Ace Five suited, Queen Ten, Jack Ten. Those are probably going to be jamming. And he's got some bluffs, and he's going to have his top of his range on the min raise. So we saw the three four off. We see Queen Eight off. Kind of not one he just wants to rip in, but he's going to be picking up just takedowns a lot. And then you know it's uh it's he's got he seems to have a nice strategy with a, a balanced mix on and a plan on what he's doing with the with the proper hand. So uh, I like what he's been how he's been executing. Uh, that his range with the min raises we're shoving so far, and of course, you know, he's gonna he's gonna min raise his worst hands and his his, his biggest hands, and then he's gonna just rip sort of the the middling middling hands. Uh, and it's not fun either. If you're if you're Gustavo and Duff, 
similar spot. You don't really want to be calling off, right? You got to call super tight for that jump. It's a massive jump for the buy-in, 17,000 difference, You're putting your chips at risk. You get ace jack, ace 10 off. It's not super fun, but maybe you have to flick it in. Uh, but yeah, I think you'd be surprised at home uh, if you plug that in and see how tight you're supposed to be calling in the spot. Um, pretty tight. You're going to need a pretty, you know, want to have a pretty good hand there. Yeah, it certainly, certainly are. Now, Jeff, I, I understand that we're uh, we're shortly going to lose you. Is that right? You've got a, so you've had a you're busy day on the go. You've just uh, got a new podcast in the uh, in the books, as it were, and uh, you'll be you'll be leaving yes. us shortly, right? Yeah, triple triple book today on stuff, and I, I had to come in though. I wanted to be a part of it. You guys even you know the we love Jeff. It feels wrong to leave before this tournament ends. It doesn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sheepishly walking off here, but James, no one's going to, well, not no one, but you, I know won't, won't uh, challenge my dedication. We've had some late nights and, and stayed oh. from extra, you know, that's doing the extracurricular. You get to, you get to leave early once in a while. So that's, uh, you know, and I don't want to leave because this is actually really fun and I am sweating it. So I appreciate it. a lot of kind words in the chat and a lot of people uh, watching. Hope you guys enjoy it. And, and James, are you having a, is someone else come in or are you going to man this, man this ship solo? Yep. No, we have a. I'm going to be solo for a few minutes, guys. So you guys watching, you have to have to deal with me for a minute. But we do have the man himself, Mr. Ike Haxton, uh, prepping himself, Jeff, to fly in here. So you know, he kind of he kind of rolls in here. He's not going to do eight-handed. You know, the guy the guy comes in for the business end. Like like you say, Jeff, you're no. you're you're the man. You, you you're not one. Uh, you're not one to usually uh, leave during the middle of the stream. And that that one in Rio will go down in the record books. We were there for a long time. You don't want to let people down. Oh, but we understand something. you've got stuff to do and. Uh, and obviously, uh, there's 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 a lot going on, man. But just just for the uh, the chance of some viewers here, maybe aren't too familiar with where they can find your podcast, I'm going to give you a little chance to plug that bad boy. So where, where should where should they be going to find it? Yeah, Jeff Crow's podcast, all the audio outlets, and then on YouTube, I do have that as well. I have one tomorrow and one on Thursday with uh, some chess. I'm diving into chess, James. Poker, I, I you know I haven't learned that completely, yeah. but chess seems like why not start a new crazy hobby? So I'm uh, I got Jen Shahadi tomorrow, and then Anna Rudolph. On Thursday, so that'll be fun. And um, you know, why not, James? We we only live once. We got to gamble while we're young. We got to learn new games. We got to take some shots. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get in the chess chess streets as well and uh, mix it up. But yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And it was always a pleasure, James. Crush it. And we'll uh, we'll see you soon at a live stop, Bahamas or before. I hope that's that's the plan in 2021. So cheers, man. All right, my man, Jeff. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks so much, always, guys. You guys, you've had a treat. We've had Jeff in the mix. Always good to have him in here. Very uh, enthusiastic about all things poker. And that was a kind of a fun one we just saw there. Armin flopping a top pair against Duff. Coming out with the check raise. Really taking the legs out of Duff. Down to just over 10 plies as Gus pops one up from under the gun on his big blind. And uh, oh, Duff Queen on offsuit. He decide this is good enough to have a little look. Mm. So the shorter you get, the more attractive these propositions become. Be a slight concern about Gus opening under the gun. Obviously, he knows Gus is going to be fairly strong here with the two big stacks behind. In theory, Gus should fold a lot of hands here because he knows arm is going to jam a lot from the small, especially in a KO tournament. So it does continue, but it's going to continue cautiously. He sees his ace-king at seven flop one that obviously hits Gus. He's going to fire Duff with just the queen of clubs. Hey, if he was a little deeper here, would potentially look to continue but i think given everything i just said is gonna have to give this one up guys free rolls going off 25 minutes left to late reg that bad boy i'm in there i'm doing pretty badly guys come get my chips good fortunate enough to draw my table i think i'm on the table with all the russians obviously we have the uh, latin american stream we have the russian language stream and, uh, I'm giving it away over there. Password is, of course, we love Jeff. <laughs> Musky Mill, I'll try and keep hold of some of them for you, my man. David popping up ace five from the hijack. Has to be a little bit more cautious now, opening with Armin having so many chips behind. As the blinds do creep up to four mil, eight mil, Duff on the button. Well below 10 now. And here we go. Armin. Just makes it very hard for Gus to play any hands when he opens it. Because he knows Duff's going to be all in very 
very soon. He also knows David can't get out of line. So even if David does continue playing hands, he's going to have to play a lot of them as just a call from the blinds. Gets another one through there for up to 700 mil. 1.3 in play, so comfortably over half the chips. And, well, this is going to be a shove from Duff, you would imagine, with the 9-10 suited. And Armand's going to look him up with this ace-4 of clubs from the big blind. Pretty close to 50-50. <laughs> Duff, uh, Duff will accept that when he's called. That's for sure. Duff's bounty is 2,700-ish. And, uh, well, whilst the sand goes down, I believe Ike is ready to jump in. I said he's going to join us any second. I believe he's waiting here in the wings. So let's try and get Ike in. Ike, you're joining us. We're going to see an all-in. 9-10 suit versus ace-4. Hello. And, well, there it is. Ace on the flop. All but ends it. Duff Charette out in third. All right, Ike, my man. How are we doing? You all good? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, man, because you can you can help us out with some of this some of this bounty bounty stuff, man. The dynamics are a little different in these events, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, fill me in on what the bounties are on each of these players. Right. So, uh, Duff's just busted was worth twenty seven hundred. So, I believe now David's worth thirteen thousand. Uh, Gus is worth twenty eight hundred. And so Armin must be worth, I believe, around about 10,000, a little bit less. Okay. Well, we've got 50, 50k now locked up for third. Right. Yes. Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, at this point, what that means is this is basically a really top-heavy tournament, right? Because right. Uh, most of that bounty money is going to first place. Yeah, so maybe somebody see, busts can... somebody and then gets second, and that person is collecting half of the bounty of the person who busts in third. But uh, at least everything beyond that, and potentially really all of the bounties at this point, are going to the person who wins the tournament. So it's effectively, you know, very top heavy, going to play almost like a cash game at this point. Wow, okay. So we, we just see a massive departure then from what we're used to seeing in, in tournaments when you got to this position, yeah. situation where you, yeah, see, so. you see David avoid things. <laughs> but. And yeah, in, in particular, uh, David is going to be incentivized to gamble against Gus as well uh, because right. th there there is the possibility he collects that bounty and then gets third but you, you said gus's bounty is quite small right yes gus is yeah definitely definitely pretty small he's uh 20 yeah so i that, that that's actually not gonna be that big of a factor um yeah with the two bigger stacks having quite a bit in bounties and the third having so little uh yeah i i think you're gonna see this play a lot like a cash game or a winner take all tournament not quite, obviously, that there is some money to be made by advancing from third to second. I mean, particularly for Gus, who has such a small share of chips in play. He, you know, is certainly rooting for a confrontation between the other two players and an opportunity to ladder. But, yeah, re relative yeah, to a normal tournament dynamic, the chip lead advantage here is not nearly so big. And Right, we, we saw it there, right? David limp raising, like, from the small much more willing to get that hand in whereas i think if this was traditional torment would be much more cautious uh, pop up now yeah queen. Uh, i mean nines is a pretty good hand for 35 odd big blinds but right so you're saying that okay that you, might not you, you could see it limit prime call example, but... the tournament. <laughs> right but and well here we go armin Coming out with the three bet, like from the small with Queen Nine suited. 
seems like a fine play. I, I think he's run into it here. He's probably just going to get jammed on and have to fold. But yeah, I mean, that that's certainly a good enough hand to play, and you could call her 3-bet, but 3-bet is a fine option. Is it almost the case here, Ike, that um, the kind of the, the laddering uh, kind of goes back more towards the shortest of the three stacks? Does does Gus enjoy watching this a lot more in the fact that he knows he's probably not going to knock someone else out in this tournament? But if he gets up to second, right. it's quite a decent gain. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. Gus is pretty pretty interested in trying to get second in this tournament, whereas the other two are really playing for first, uh, and the sec the difference between second and third is not so great for them. So it, it does create a situation where Gus is more likely to be able to ladder here than he would be under other circumstances, because the other two players are competing for all that money that's in the bounties as well, and Gus has limited opportunity to win that money himself, and will be... Yeah. Yeah, a, a much larger share of Gus's potential EV here comes from managing to get second. Yeah, it's, it's just like, a, it's a weird thing, right? And, and like, it just becomes more likely, I guess, with yeah. David being kind of forced to, to gamble um, a little bit. As we see, Armin Peel is 7-8 from the big 6-6-10 flop. Flops gut shot, draw Gus with the, that's with the ace as well. Might not be done with this one just yet, like. Yeah, I, I don't think Armin is folding the flop. I think he could, depending on the bet size here, either call or raise. Pretty much regardless of the bet size, in fact, either call or raise is going to make sense. But certainly not fold. Barely more than a blind into a five big blind pot. Armin in the tank. Let's go for the check race. Yeah, this, is, this is how Gus drew it up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he should probably just call there. Not the best turn for Armin. I think it would be very reasonable to just shut it down here. Right, not, yes. not the best because what Gus continues with some, some queens, right? On Gus continues with a lot of overcards and... That card is going to interact a little with some of the other hands Armin could be check-raising, like 9-8 now picks up a double gutter, 9-7 at least blocks some of the gutters relative to 8-7. Uh, he can have a hand like Jack-9 or Queen-Jack or even King-9, all, all kinds of things that interact a little more than 8-7 with that turn card. I, I think it, it's a card where he's going to check a lot of his range because it's relatively good for the in-position player and his hand is pretty bad even relative to the other things he could be bluffing with so i don't think it's a bad play to bet the turn but i would be giving up more often than i bet well he did fire a little stab for quarter pot and got punish and I, I guess I, everything you were saying there makes sense for why then, then Gus is obviously going to just jam over on the turn right because you think yeah it, it's a pretty have, dynamic have, have turn card. Energy, right? yeah I, I think particularly he did not have the ace of the flush draw right so I, I think especially given that it makes a lot of sense to jam the turn a lot of the time Um, that open jam with ace nine there, obviously, fine play. Uh, I think that is mostly what you're doing there, it, 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 if not 100% of the time. Just, you know, less than 25 big blinds, ace nine's a great hand to be all in with. It certainly is, as Gus completes from this more now with David in the big 3-4 offsuit. I, I, I enjoy this. Uh, Ike, you know, I, I, I'm like some other people, you know, watching this. Don't play a whole huge amount of these knockouts when I have played them. I, I enjoy them, but 
you know, naturally, you don't get to play farm tables too often. It's, it's fun to watch how these things right. play out because there's, there's clearly a big shift. Um, yeah, yeah, knockouts are interesting. I think relative to normal tournaments, people are not as good at playing knockouts. I mean, myself included, for sure. I, I'm saying what I think here, but I'm not that confident that any of it is right. It's particularly okay. hard to analyze. Ooh, that's uh, that's going to be a problem for Gus. He's yes. drawing dead here <laughs> with a hand that looks pretty good. The, the ace is not such a big scare card here because David is going right. to be raising preflop with quite a lot of his ace-x hands. So I think, I think we're going to see Gus get stacked here quite often. That's half pot. David in position seems to flush draws up as well. So there's, I mean, there's, there's hands he wants to protect against, hands he wants to get value against, but also hands he can kind of represent, yeah. right? As this hand plays out, even if he just calls here, we can see some raises on the river that will make sense as bluffs. May opt for yep. some raises here. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's time, right? that's a good play. I think it makes sense to put in a raise immediately with this hand, at least some of the time. If he calls, he's leaving nearly double pot to play on the river, so... It's going to be relatively hard to get stacks in, especially if river is, you know, a club or a diamond or a 10-jack king. Three, four. Wow. Oh, wow. Gus gets away from it immediately. Great. It's a nice fold. Great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, slightly, I, we saw at the start of the final table, David was super active. Um, was in there smashing up, but kind of probably for the last hour or so has been a little snugger. So perhaps mm -hmm. uh, one presumes that Gus is kind of watching the stream, seeing David's been playing pretty mm -hmm. uh, fit or fold, and, and maybe just says, you know what? This, if he's bluffing me, good luck to him. He can, he can have this one. He gets away from it. Nice fold. Yeah. And coming in here, though, with the ace-queen. Yeah, guys, I, I know some of the chat, you're loving this as well. I'm watching it, trying to work out exactly what goes on in these bounty events. And as Ike says, I, mem I remember, Ike, you said last time you were on here, you said, you know, you... You're very honest with that. You're like, look, a lot of people don't really know completely yet. Like, there's there's the obvious thing of, well, okay, I've got to gamble a bit more because it's a bounty tournament, but no one, it's 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 still up in the air, right? It's still really open. Like, it's what, it's extremely up in the air. Yeah, as, as far as I know, there there aren't really any software tools that are very good for analyzing this sort of thing, and. Especially at the highest stakes, bounty tournaments make up a very small amount of the volume that anybody plays. So, yeah, I I, I think it's really a pretty wide open format at this point. Ooh. Uh, Armin's popping up Ace Knight Diamonds here. Gus has ripped for sub twenty from the small Ace Knight of Diamonds. Here. Yeah, looks like it's uh, more than yeah. strong enough. Does make the cool flops safe turn safe bricks out on the river. Mike, just like that, we lose Gus out in third place. Uh, yep, I mean, pretty up. much just a cooler. It's yeah. Uh, picking up, you know, Ace Nine and King Jack doesn't exactly seem like your classic cooler, but relative to the situation, they both just had good enough hands that the money's going in. Yeah, Gus. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just. Well, it is, right? Gus gets uh, just under 50k in prize money and a little over 5k in bounties. But uh, obviously now we know mm -hmm. that the big money is between those these two. We see, uh, obviously, you're watching second place, 76k, first place, 76k. But we know it's a lot more at stake than that because of the bounties. Obviously, David did the, uh, yeah, did the early heavy lifting. What, another so he's... roughly 40k in bounties? Yes, that's that, that sounds pretty much bang on. I think like um, yeah, I think, I think you're right in that 40k difference. Um, 
So yeah, someone's leaving here with six figures for this this five hundred uh, dollar tournament. And obviously, now that it's heads up, the bounties are no longer really a consideration. Right. It, it's it's winner take all. Uh, it's just just pure poker, right? Mary heads up just... match. <laughs> yeah. And Armin has been unstoppable. They've lost that fast start, as I mentioned before. Uh, but Armin, mid stage of this final table, has taken the lead and run with it. And these two have just. They kind of one of the all ins. Like it's good. It's a good trick to have on a final table, you know. Just it's, no sweats. You get it. In, you knock them out. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> David stabbing at this one with the bottom pair. A little vulnerable, Ike, on this kind of board. Um, I guess you see a little bit yeah, of both I, with this kind of hand. I think so. Yeah, I think. With bottom pair in general, you're going to see a lot of both. I think with the ace and king kickers, you're going to see mainly betting, but probably not 100%, I, I think. Yeah, well played hand. Some of you guys are asking in the chat for the password. The password is we love Jeff. You still have a few minutes to get involved in the WPT 500 free roll. Like... I, we, we say we love Jeff, we should change the password, man. He, he just deserts us here, you know. Uh, <laughs> Jeff was on here a little earlier. Get in the mix, guys. That free roll going off. We're giving off an Irish open opener seat. Please do head over to Party Poker. You can find the free and roll. the cat has arrived. Here we go. A little feline assistance. Uh, Armin, Jack suit suited, does elect to continue. Here we go. Ike flops yeah, top I pair. Think, I think that's easily a good enough hand called three bet. And David is a little stuck here, out of position. Yeah. Be interesting to see how this plays out. Going with the kind of automatic third pot continuation bet. I think that's a fine play, but checking is fine as well. Right, I guess the argument, like that the betting just kind of makes the hand perhaps a little easier to play, kind of. Yeah, it does. It does. I, I think it is a reasonable way of making your life easy to three bet a little bit tighter than optimal and then pretty much always bet the flop, uh, at least on boards that are not super unfavorable for you. Seven of spades, pretty good looking card for Arm. Picks up a flush draw to go with that top pair. Has been checked over to him on this turn. Again, I, I mean, I, I hate saying it over and over again, but I guess it's more attractive. <laughs> yeah. like, kind of a little bit of a. Uh, you, you're, you're just super happy to call a shove here. Right. Which would be a reasonable play from David's side. He has the ace of spades. He has two overs to the jack. Jack jamming this hand is totally reasonable. Uh, right. I, I think up. you're not really meant to fold there. I think ace king and ace queen, you know, especially if you're playing a plan where you're almost always betting the flop, ace king and ace queen are just too good to check fold the turn there. Right, I, I mean, on on that, well, Jack 5 3, so we're thinking we're up against what's well, plenty of those kind of Broadway combos that don't include a Jack. Is, is that what we're thinking that some of them still stab turn? Yeah, for third pot on the flop, I think virtually every backdoor flush draw is going to continue. You know, if somehow you have maybe exactly Queen 4 or something like that, you could fold, but. Backdoor flush draw on two overs to the five, which is pretty much always going to mean some kind of backdoor straight draw as well. I don't really think you're ever folding those hands for third pot on the flop. So yeah, Ar Ar Armin should be unpaired quite a lot. And you know you have pretty good equity against top pair, at least compared to a lot of other hands you could have, especially the hands you could have that didn't bet again on the turn. So I, I think you're just meant to call. And then the river is going to not be fun 
and I think sometimes <laughs> you have to call even if you don't improve. But right. Yeah, there's some <laughs> there's certainly some grim spots. Form. Yeah. I mean, he, he managed to get away from it. Um, but no, it's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I like everything. Yeah. I mean, saying, it, like, it, it makes, makes ended up being sense. a good like, play. He he was in very bad shape. He had five outs, I guess. Uh, and and a lot of ways for the river to go badly. <laughs> he could, yeah, uh, you know, hit the king of spades and get stacked. Or it's it's just funny the way the way you say this because in my mind I'm seeing like the jack five three. I'm seeing my opponent calls a bet. Then once the bet turn, I'm thinking, well, there's not a lot I beat here, but purely because of the size of the c bet on the flop, because of the three bet pot, like you say, all those backdoor flush rules are sticking in there. Suddenly this board that looks like it's not too rich in potential bluffs is actually very rich in potential bluffs just because of yeah i i, I think you can just easily be out. against like queen eight of clubs there yeah it's, it's fascinating like just uh, and, and it, it's because, very uh, unintuitive okay, so for people who it. haven't played a lot of heads up because yeah you very rarely play spots that are similar to heads up pots in a full ring game you know uh blind versus blind has certain similarities but pre-flop dynamics are very different so you, you're still not really playing spots that are very much like a heads up three bet pot that that's a pretty unique sort of situation that you you need to right, have either played a lot or, or or studied directly to really have a lot of familiarity with how those mechanics work. Right. I mean, in that particular spot, I mean, obviously in a heads up spot, blind on blind, you you're not you're not three betting out of position like you are in in a in a pure heads up. Exactly. Match, which obviously, is is very unique as. Well, I mean, you yeah, the, the only pot you're playing. Spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's another one where he very reasonably could have called the river. Yeah. Or, or yeah, raised, guess, uh, for that matter. He, he did have the uh, king of clubs. Yeah. The um, Yeah, I guess the, the most similar spot then, like, in, in this is kind of, I guess, what, small to button, perhaps? Or, or big to button? I don't know. Probably big to button, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the button versus small blind, the small blind... Is three betting a much larger percentage of their continues relative to calling, and has kind of a more linear, condensed sort of range, whereas button against big blind they can call and close the action, so it's more analogous to heads up, and they have a sort of more polar three betting range. Uh, but it's still quite different because typically the button's opening like forty or fifty percent of hands into two players. And at 50 big blinds deep, 60 big blinds deep here, the button is opening maybe 75% of hands and, and limping most of the rest if, if they're playing limps at all or, or just opening 90% plus. Right. Very, very few folds. Yeah. And I mean, here's, here's a case of what yeah, David, here, here David comes to raise the 10-3 off suit. There we go. Exactly as you say. Uh, Armin with ace eight in the big. That's just flat. King do six. Yeah, I, th I think all the options are reasonable with ace eight off there. All the options okay. being call, small three bet, or just ripping it. Uh, fold not being one of the reasonable options. <laughs> And the, and the benefit of like three bet ripping for forty bigs with a hand like Ace Eight, just little, you don't get called by the though. Broadway hands. Mainly is uh, you, you'd really rather just get the fold right away rather than get called and see a flop against Jack Ten suited. Right. I, I think probably if your opponent is limping as often as they should be, you are rarely to never shoving. Ace eight off, but if they're playing more raises and fewer limps than you think is best, you might uh, deviate and stick it in. Or right, it might seems... be okay to stick it in some of the time, even optimally. 
And obviously, if, if we're seeing you know, like the ten three offsuit getting raised to, obviously this comes, like I said, a little right. Bit there, there, <laughs> there's a good chance David is playing a button strategy here that involves raising a bit more than the computer would tell you to. And he's got himself in the spot where he's ten high on the river, on an unchanged board, effectively unchanged board. We've got a three blocker Ike, you know, a little bit of excitement. It's not the worst thing to have in your hand. I'd rather bluff with this than 10-7. I, I, I think this is basically a fine play. I usually use a bigger size if I bet here, but... Bet check bet. Very reasonable line with this hand. Yeah, I, I like it. We don't see enough of the... Uh... I'm, I'm a big fan, Ike, of the bet check bet lines. This is what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. They, that's that's a spot where a lot of people do not call it enough. Yeah. It, seem, it seems just from from doing so much commentary lately, like I just don't... I, I don't know. This is this is probably just like I've, I've mentioned it once, so I, I, I feel like I'm looking for it, but you just don't... You just don't see a lot of bluffs taking that line. I don't know. This, it seems like quite a generic I thing agree. to say, but... I feel like it's under an underutilized spot. I I think very broadly speaking, once a street checks through, players tend to put too little money in the pot from both sides. There, there's too little bluffing and too little calling. The small pots uh, get neglected. Yeah. So that that was a, a, one of my favorite things to attack when I was uh, mainly a heads-up no-limit player in the kind of prehistoric days before we had solvers <laughs> and we're just uh, figuring <laughs> things out with pen that, and paper huh? and poker tracker frequencies. Uh, finding people who folded way too much on the turn river after check-check flop was... That, that was an exciting find. That, that was somebody I wanted to play a lot, and that was a lot of my opponents. <laughs> right. And, like, I guess part of it is just the psychology of, like, okay, I'm done with the sand. Let's, let's get on to the next one. And people just fighting over the big three-bet pots, I guess. And yeah, it, it's so easy to feel like the, the big pots where money goes in pre-flop and on the flop, and you're looking at 30 BB in the middle on the turn are the ones that matter, but... The small pots really do add up, and finding a consistent leak that you can just pick away at in those, you know, limp check, 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 min bet, and they fold too much in that spot, like, that that really adds up in a heads-up match. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, man, I mean, I say, I mean, people obviously... If every, and everyone's working on one side of that game as well, right? Everyone's looking at those. What am I supposed to do in these 30 people blind pots? What am I supposed to do in these 50 people blind pots? And kind of everyone knows what everyone's supposed to be doing those. And you're you're looking the other side and going, okay, well, what am I doing in this like six people blind pot where there's been one bet? Maybe maybe yeah. this is where I can find a, a decent edge and no one else is working on it. Then um, things may well work. Interesting hand potentially here. I say interesting, entertaining hand. Yeah, Ace four v Ace four. We see yeah. a three bet from Armin. Um, David uh, with a hand, he's, he's... I, I would generally call here. I don't think shoving is crazy, but I think calling is probably best. And ten, seven, deuce, rainbow. David with backdoor diamonds. A, a texture Ike uh, Armin's gonna have a fracture of concern about with David peeling in position. Yeah, that that ten seven part of the range is relatively favorable for the caller. Uh, the three better tends to have a lot more Broadway cards and a lot less ten through six. So yeah, D David's going to have more pairs and more gut shots on this board. And I do think some checking from Armin is reasonable. Let's check 
once more on this queen turn. Guys, you've got just under three minutes left to register for the WPT 500 free roll. Please, if you're not already in, jump on over to Party Poker. You'll find the tournament in the restricted tab. The password is we love Jeff. Get involved. 500 euro Irish opener. Opener! opener. Ticket. Uh, up for grabs and 500 euros in cash. The remaining finishers. Last. That's your last chance, guys. That's the last warning I'm given. Get on over. Get in there. Be quick. Someone's going to win that ticket. There's Less entertainment than promised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I get excited like when I see the uh, the same hand versus the same hand. It's always amusing. Oh, yeah. The, there were a lot of ways that could have gotten exciting. <laughs> I remember absolutely butchering one of those hands like in a on a televised <laughs> final where I was like I just I made like a I, I had sevens v sevens against someone I've made like a horrendous bluff when they've like re bluffed me on this vortex. <laughs> that, that, the hand today the hand today looks so terrible. Okay, let's this is a two thousand eleven hand, okay, just in my defense, but it's just Oh, I, I played some really ugly looking hands in two thousand eleven. <laughs> yeah. But we both got dealt two sevens, and there's me check raising like a king queen board and getting three bet post flop and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> bananas. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I'm in with queen ten. Check six one back seven four three. King of clubs rolls off on the turn. Uh, someone asking what we have to do in the chat in regards to the free roll. Well, you've got to be quick. That's what you got to do. And you've got to head on over to Party Poker. You've got less than a minute. WPT 500 free roll. Click Reg. Password as we love Jeff. Best of luck. 500 euros seat. 500 euros in cash as well. Given out. And Armin does pick up uh, another one. Yeah, I think that's a reasonably played hand from both sides. I see uh, UK Lucifer saying get tired after playing at 6,000 online tournament. Well, that's, that's what's quite nice with these tournaments, Ike. Obviously, this is uh, the third day of this event for a $500 online event. They play down, I believe, to around the money on the first day and then down to the final table the second day. But it makes it a bit nicer, doesn't it, Ike? I mean, you must remember the days uh, online tournaments that were big in nature would be potentially like 20 hours right in one shot. Oh, I yeah. I, I remember. And... I I played a lot of those from Europe as well, so I remember, you know, like 2014 or so playing Scoop, and for a month my routine was to wake up around 9 p.m., play poker until around 11 a.m., go out for lunch, and then go to sleep. <laughs> uh, oh, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> It's I, I think that kind of schedule like. agrees with me more than most people, but yeah, not ideal. Not not great for your health. No, it was, uh, yeah, I'm I'm with. I remember doing those. You just you just never felt that good. <laughs> like I always no. like I was I was I was jealous of anyone on the west coast of the United States or west coast of Canada. I was like, man, you guys got no idea how good you got it. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. It, after doing I mean, that for a few is, years and then going from Malta to Vancouver and, and going from starting my days right. at like 8 p.m. to 11 a.m., that's a big improvement. <laughs> mm -hmm. But also, I mean, just forgetting the, the, the actual time is on, but just the, the, the time spent grinding. Uh, it was like brutal, those sessions, whereas now it's oh, yeah. far more attractive. Uh, playing it like this just just spread over three absolutely days. I, I i think the multi-day tournaments are a big improvement there's and there's a part of me that enjoys the sort of sick. poker that really tests your stamina i i do think i'm better than average at that and it's not bad for my bottom line to make my opponents play 20 hour tournaments but It's it's not good for your health. 
it's definitely not. And I think this is this is much better as well for people who've, uh, you know, uh, obviously people who, who a lot a lot of the players we we won on these tournaments are going to be playing recreationally. They're going to have work to get to. They're going to not want to be yeah. playing the kind of hours you're mentioning. Like even if it's even if it's only six hours, it's much nicer if it's. Uh, the right six hours of the day so people can can do that for sure up, yeah work, come back play day two yeah it's pretty great if you're in the right time zone you can play these tournaments from like 6 p.m to midnight for three days and it doesn't even keep you from going to work yeah uh, guys we did a another giveaway of course we do it at the top of every hour all you have to do to win those tickets is follow us right here on Twitch. And I can tell you, uh, well, I'll read out the first five of those winners as Armin gets this three bet in. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he gets this one through, actually, Ike, but maybe uh, David, Queen, This nine, is right uh, on the fringe. I, I think especially right. against that particularly large size, he should fold, but he should definitely call Queen 10, definitely fold Queen 8, and Queen, queen Nine's right there on the border. Yeah, this one uh, looks a little safer. So let me uh, let me just tell you guys, those eleven dollar tickets they are going to Frankishian Coffee Zombie Furion three 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 three, Aiden Sully, Finley ninety. Those are the first five, and we have five more that I'll give away in a moment. So if you just heard your name, congratulations! Someone will contact you through Twitch to get your party poker account details and award you with one of those $11 tickets. What a fun money for nothing, guys. We've got the free roll, we've got the giveaways. Ha, I think I've uh, I think I've made a mistake there, so I apologize to Frank Sheehan because you were the last name. I thought it sounded too familiar. I think you were the last name with the last one. So it's been, if it's been sent to me, it's not my fault, Ike. I'm blaming someone else. I've been sent 11 <laughs> winners. Frank Sheen, you, you won the last <laughs> giveaway. You're not you're not winning two. That's what I'm going out with on a limb here. So apologies there, guys. Um, that'll be uh, that be some run good. But the other the other winners are uh, Armiso Seven, In Your Face Boy, B Hands Itch Zero Two Three, Daniel Soren Twenty Six, and BRN That's a pretty big Ooh, Twenty-seven blinds finding their way I mean, he, to the middle. He has the right hand for it if he's going to do it with something, but I think it's a little bit too much to be doing it even with that. Oh, this this could be the end right here. Wow. Kings versus King Queen of Diamonds. We just saw Jam a second ago. Armin opens up once more. 2.3x. I think we almost always see a 3-bet either all in or not here. I think not all in is... Oh! He... Oh, wow. well, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. gonna do it. <laughs> we see a flat instead from David Phillips. Top two. Armin with top set. Ike, bar a really scary run out here. This is this is surely it, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you see David raise the flop here most of the time and then probably just stick it in on most turns he's playing this one very passive and i guess if the river is an ace or a 10 or maybe even a nine there's a chance of not getting stacked and armin sizing here on the turn obviously the, the jack's going to bring in a lot of extra equity for, for david's range right and a lot of more continues so. yeah i think you don't bet real big here i think this size is about right or maybe just slightly bigger i think it's not a full pot sort of situation for the most part maybe, maybe occasionally especially with top set That's i would be playing it like this it goes 53 mil leaves himself a pot size behind River uh, club, but the, the non-connecting six of clubs. It's interesting here where you have two kings and the king of clubs, and it's making it kind of hard to get called by a lot of worse hands. It wouldn't be 
crazy to try sizing down here, betting maybe half pot. But, I, I mean, mostly I think you just go all in. Right, kind of, you don't expect to really be beat, but at the same time, there aren't crazy amount of hands. Yeah, I, I think that go. that's a pretty reasonable play here, actually. And, uh, it's, it's a okay, really David difficult hand to get called just... with. Yeah, David does just cool, and somehow, Ike is... It's continuing this tournament. We saw <laughs> yep. the hammers dealt out. You thought that was it. When the flop was dealt out, we were sure that was it. Somehow <laughs> he's left himself with 10 blinds, although now rips it in with 10 4 suit. He's going to get snapped by the ace jack. Flops the pair, but Armin Rezai turns a jack. Didn't need the space, didn't need the gut shot. A pair of jacks is enough. And just like that, a couple of uh, pretty crazy hands here. Armin Rezai. Is the WPT 500 knockout champion, and uh, I, I think he wins. Uh, yeah, like you're saying, around forty thousand more in. Bounce, yeah, about one fifteen ish, maybe even one twenty. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's. Uh, let me look at. I think he gets sixty k in bounties on top of the seventy sixty. Six. Cash for. So here, there we go. Look at this. One thirty nine is it? Is his total out of this tournament? Oh yeah, uh, I. They've, I was, yeah, I was confused about how those bounties were being counted. Yeah. Right. So they, so they were playing for effectively 40k between them, but obviously they already had over 100 locked up with the bounties. They right. They each had 25 in bounties locked up, roughly, and they were playing right. for another 40. Yeah. Beautiful scenario, as we see there. Of course, we saw uh, Robert, Jordan, and uh, Alexi all knocked out in super fast fashion. And uh, we saw a five-handed run for a while with Ben and Duff busting out. But eventually, Ike, Armin Rezai is our winner. And, and I mean, you weren't with us for very long, Ike. You, 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 you come in no. here, you, things, <laughs> things I, I was got expecting smashed to be up. a little longer. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a fun one. It was, well, Ike, as always, it was, it was nice to have you on. Uh, we really do appreciate yeah, it. thanks for it's having just, me. A shame we didn't go to go into those dynamics more because I think it'd be fascinating uh, if we have another one of these kind of knockouts to do, like because as you say, you confess yourself, you, you're not 100% sure on this stuff, and a lot of people aren't. But it'd be it'd be nice, I know, for the people watching to, to kind of delve into that a little bit more in the future. So hopefully uh, we get another one like this, and you can you can join. Yeah, us I'd love that. to get in for a little longer on one. All right, well. Well, thanks, Ike. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to all of you guys for watching. Uh, me personally, be back next for the Irish Open Online. Please do head on over to Party Poker and give that a go. Chance of qualifying for what is always a fantastic event. But beside that, please do keep an eye tuned to this channel because there's loads of fantastic content coming up with the Daily Legend, the Daily Legend challenges and whatnot going off. But guys. Until next time, the best of luck, and we'll see you soon for the Irish Open.